on Saints Nation. Welcome back to the stream. I am Patrick Smoke Chambers, joined by... Zarin. Um, happy to be back on the broadcast for, I think it's the first time this year, but excited to bring, for the first time in Saints broadcast history, some Madden. 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 Uh, very excited uh, to have this on stream finally. I know the uh, the sports games teams is, is very excited as well to have this on stream, but I know we're both football fans. It's going to be a fun one, I think. Absolutely. I can't wait. And we actually have our uh, player today here for a quick little interview. So he wants to slide on in through. Welcome, Zach, also known as Benny. Hi there. Hi there. Nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, I mean, just a quick fire question right off the bat. How does it feel to like compete in the collegiate scene for something like this? I'm really excited. Uh, I've been playing Madden for a while. Uh, the fact that the school is holding a league for this and helping us uh, get through college with a sports team for Madden, that's that's great, man. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, something else I want to bring up, this is just a little bit of a fun one now, because I know you're, you're a Ravens fan. Yes, yes. Zarin here is a Steelers fan. I want you to explain to me why the Ravens are better than the Steelers in a quick summary, and then I want Zarin oh, to explain back to you why the Steelers are better than the Ravens. Well, we've won the AFC North, like, uh, I don't know, two years in a row, I think, maybe a year in a row. I don't know, one year, but man, the rivalry, rivalry goes on, it's pretty even, but uh, no, we got the better quarterback, better uh, coach, and yeah, man. And what's your response to that? Well, I'll start things off. This year, Steelers 3-0, and Ravens 1-2, and um, yeah. pretty self-explanatory. Historically, Steelers beat the beat the crap out of everybody in, in their division. Um, close games with the Ravens always, but, you know, Lamar can take his two-time MVP because he's never won anything important, so. Oh, All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe a little harsh, guys. I'm sorry. I was going to say, that's yeah. My bad. That's my bad. <laughs> you know, took the, took the first one a little personal. Yeah, yeah. Very, very, you know, very passionate about that. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's all yeah. passion at the end of the day. Yeah. And uh, I guess just another, uh, what, what's your prediction? Uh, your debut stream, you know, you think you're going to uh, be playing well? What, what do you, how do you see this game going for what you know so far? Uh, I think it's going to be a close game. Uh, I'm going to hopefully say me uh, two and him one. Let's hope for the best, right? Like. That's what I'm hoping. I'm gonna first game maybe twenty one to seven. Me? Ooh. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. okay. All, All right. right. All right. Like That's what that. I'm saying. A little prediction. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And uh, if I had to just give you one more, uh, what would you? What side of the ball do you prefer being on? What's your play style? Do you prefer uh, offense, defense? I li I'm liking offense. I like having possession of the football. Uh, if you have possession of the football, you control the game. I think so. Absolutely. Offense is a better defense, man. Oh, that's all there is to it. Yeah. Well, yeah. hey, thank you for taking the time to come on the desk. It was great having you here. And, hey, let's hope you kick some butt some Madden tonight, okay? All right. Thank we'll you for you having me. Thank you for having me. being here. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. We got some Madden up soon. Yes. I mean, it's going to be amazing. I love whenever we have games for the first time on stream. It's new. It's a challenge to cast. It's a challenge to just watch. And in general, I, I think it's going to bring new eyes, hopefully, to the stream. Who knows, man? Who Absolutely. Knows? We, we don't usually have uh, new games on stream very often, but this year, obviously, with the introduction of our sports games teams, we saw it yesterday already with NHL. Um, that was that was pretty fun to actually have on stream as well as a, as a longtime hockey fan myself. But to, to have Madden and I'm sure eventually FIFA, uh, NBA 2K as well, we're going to see a lot of new games over the course of this year. So I'm, I'm excited just to be a part of this right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, you know, I don't know how long exactly until we get into game, but hopefully soon. Uh, but until then, I would think that, you know, let's get some predictions out of you yourself. You know, we met... Zach and uh, what are we what are we thinking? Just based off the attitude, what are we what are we going with score predictions? Well, keep let's let's put out of the mind that he is a Ravens fan, okay? Um, I I, th I think he'll be fine. He seems pretty confident in himself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we were talking to him a little bit beforehand. He's a possession kind of guy, and I think that's super important for a game like Madden. You want control of the ball for as long as you can. Um, it's very annoying to play against, but that's such a good thing to, to have against somebody. So um, I'm, I, I think he's going to win two straight. I, I don't think mm. he's going to have too much issues, but um, you know, very excited to see what uh, the opponents have to offer. At the no, same time. Absolutely. Um, in terms of some stuff that I can say, uh, I we were talking to him before 
he's probably going to pick one of Philly or Baltimore mm-hmm. uh, going into the first matchup. Let's just talk about the potential of like what both of those teams could bring. Right. I mean, we see you've heard his game plan. Would you think that the Ravens to start off would be a better choice for his game plan? Someone who likes to hold the ball, drain possession and go on defense. Yeah, I I think Baltimore overall has a stronger defense in Philadelphia and definitely um, more secondary ability for sure. Like you're going to see Kyle Hamilton. um, I believe he has superstar uh, capabilities as well. Um, He's going to be the strong safety for Baltimore. And it does look like he did choose Baltimore so there we go I, I like this play it's a good possession team and a good running football team so it's easy to to you know to do exactly that with this team at the same time you know I would probably predict uh you know unless it's a big like misplay on defense to for it to be a relatively lower scoring game because we're also against the Jets defense a defense that's been just widely regarded as one of the best throughout the league for the past well this year and last year for the past two years so it'll be interesting to see that matchup between Zay Flowers and Sauce Gardner and then on the other side we'll just see how Derrick Henry can run the rock because it's it's going to be tough getting through that front seven especially uh you know (laughs) <laughs> when, when they're just so strong. I mean, there's no other word really to use for it. Uh, so it's going to be an interesting test for our opponent, St. F- uh, 515 and uh, Aaron Rodgers to see if they can break through. Yeah, this is a, it's a really interesting choice, the New York Jets, because obviously you have Brees Hall um, as the main running back. You got Garrett Wilson on the outside, but you lose a lot of mobility with Aaron Rodgers in the pocket. With with Lamar and the likes of the Eagles with Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes as well. I mean, you, you like to scramble outside of the pop, pocket, create space, and uh, eventually get the ball downfield once you do exactly that. Um, but we're going to kick things off here as Rodgers is going to line up under center. It's going to be Mount Aloysius uh, kicking things off. It's Saints 5-1-5 with the ball. It's going to be a handoff to Brees Hall right up the middle. Going to be about a gain of three-ish yards, I'm going to say. Yeah, so decent start. We're going to get the, the taste of what kind of tempo uh, Saints 5-1-5 is going to bring here against our boy Benny 5-1-9. As it's going to be a second straight run for a grand total of six yards as we get to third and four. Brent, I mean, so far, like you said, third and four right now, Jets lining up an eye form. You got to think maybe, maybe some play action soon. Yep, that's going to be exactly what happens. Oh, Looking for the corner route, but it's actually oh. going to be picked by Washington. Benny, with a great play, just undercuts the route, and he finds the perfect user interception. Yeah, I think I think 5-1-5 threw that to the wrong player i i think he had the outside wide receiver just a little bit deeper as you see on that replay in the background there i think that was garrett wilson on the outside just i think he just hit the wrong button because he had that one for a touchdown easily but nevertheless great interception from benny we got derrick henny running the ball up for 11 yards and that's going to be a first down for baltimore and benny and a good start for him great interception on the third play of the game and already a first down right i mean absolutely henry bouncing it to the outside and if you're trying to tackle derrick henry someone tackling him one-on-one it's probably not going to go your way so again i believe now going again with a run to the outside this one pressure from the backfield but kenry's going to cut up the outside and he's actually going to be able to get that first something i didn't think was going to happen but the defender just missed the tackle henry taking advantage of it and benny looking smooth so far in the run game yeah pushing the pace as well two rushes 21 yards total back to derrick henry who go that's gonna be another first down great move Woo! And Derrick Henry going to trot in the end zone as Benny going to take a 6 to nothing lead. Well, there's just an absolute gap through the outside. It's happened three times in a row right now. St. 5-1-5 not able to adjust to it in time. PAT up, and it's good from Justin Tucker. So, again, about as good of a start as you could have asked for. Yeah, great start indeed. And it, it all started with that interception. And we'll, we'll see how Saints elect to – sorry, Saints 5-1-5 – elect to, you know, process themselves back on offense because that's obviously not the ideal start you want. Decent little return, going to get up to about the 30-yard line as Aaron Rodgers and company going to enter back onto the field here. Um, started out with a couple runs straight up the middle. Didn't quite go well. The play action obviously made the mistake on offense, but here we go, starting off in the shotgun. Here we go, Rodgers from shotgun. Going to elect to again go play action, but it's going to be a sack, a mistake there. Kyle Van Noy with his first one on the game. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers again. You, you lose that mobility in the pocket with him. He does have the strong arm, which he's got to start to utilize. But you see now all that time in the pocket pressure coming. Just throw broken up. I believe that was Hamilton there. 
to knock that one away. And it's going to be a third down and long for the Jets. Well, again, everything covered. And again, that's Rodgers throwing into double coverage uh, right there. It's just not a smart play. I think literally everything was covered. You're losing the mobility, like you said, with a quarterback. And it's going to result in yet another Raven sack. Yeah, bring in the pressure. Baltimore gets the sack. Benny with a huge play to force the punt. Fourth and 23. You know, Saints 5-1-5 going to push this one all the way down the field. It's going to be number three. I don't actually know who that is on the return, but... Uh, Special teams players. Yeah, not, not a great uh, return, but nevertheless, decent enough field position for Benny to, you know, st start new again. And already with a 7-0 lead, he can certainly take his time as he... I mean, clock is not really a factor yet here in the first half, but Derrick Henry back again. Bounces on the outside, somehow gets away from that defender. Great move and another 11-yard run. Four carries, 57 yards for Derrick Henry. And ben Benny's off to a great start. I mean, he's starting off hot, just like I said. That's like, what, four times now he's bounced to the outside with Henry. You know, Derrick Henry making the move inside as well, avoids the first tackle, and he's going to pick up another three yards pretty much after contact. So, again, if it's not broke, don't fix it. He's just going to keep doing the same thing. Finally, it seems like the defense gets to him, and that one should be held for a loss of one. Yeah, you're going to see this a lot from Benny, I think, throughout this game and also this series, just holding on to the football as long as possible, you know, really dictating the tempo of this game, and right now he is. This this one's going to be a fake jet, I believe it is. Yeah, here's the shuffle pass. No, Lamar's going to keep. Could that block from the tight end come in? No. That uh, either tight end, either Mark Andrews or the other tight end could have blocked that first player, and that could have been a lot more yardage. But nevertheless, a decent run, and now a third and short. I believe it was Isaiah likely coming off the left side, but still, again, exactly like you said, he's just going to go up the gut again with Henry, able to almost break the first tackle, but not quite go through. Fourth and two, and he's actually going to go for it. A little bit of a risky play here, but if he can just keep possession, like you said, maybe he's got... Oh, it's going to be Kohler on the check down. Again, I thought he was going to go to Henry, honestly. He seemed like he was on the beginning of what would have been a nice little route on the wheel, uh, wheel route inside there on the left. But again, it's enough to get the first down. That's all Ben cares about. Now we can just drain clock again. If I were him, first and 10, I'd put it on another run. Yeah, it looks like that's going to be the case here. Lead blocker Zay Flowers kind of gets caught up in Lamar Jackson as Derrick Henry was running by. I like the decision to go for it there. Look, you're on the 50-yard line, perhaps a little bit too close to punt um, and too far for a field goal. So don't don't hate that play call, and it ends up working out as, the, as he barely gets it, but he does nevertheless. And going into the second quarter now, Benny with a 7-0 lead, trotting down the field like he does. Right, and we just got to hope that he continues up this momentum again with another run. However, he's going to call an audible now for a passing play. I want to see how he utilizes this man, but no, a quick pressure on the QB. I thought it was a sack at first. I had to just look real quick. The ball did come out, but it was moving forward. His arm was moving forward when he released it, so it will count as an incomplete pass. Third and six now. Let's see what Benny does. Yeah, Kohler, you see pushing on the outside. Another play. We've seen this once already. Mark Andrews there for the catch and more. About a 20-yard gain, make it 26. It's going to be a first down for Benny. And a great play call. You see you see the shift out of Kolar coming in just across the line of scrimmage. Brings the linebackers down, allows Mark Andrews to get open out uh, about 10 yards down the field, and that results in a first down. Here's Derrick Henry on the outside. A good run there, six yards. And again, he can just keep pounding the rock through Henry because... It's just not, it's it's not failing, right? I mean, he's picking up at minimum six yards uh, almost on every run, if not more, right? I mean, his average is way more than that. I'm just bringing stuff down, but bouncing to the outside, he's finally going to get a little bit of a stop here, I believe. A tackle for a loss of one, third and five coming up, and what's Benny going to do? Single back formation, and now he's going to go up to play action. He has that Andrews route again open, but Andrews is just not going to be able to hold on. Great breakup there there by the safety. Yeah, I think Benny was just about a half a second late of releasing that football. I think that would have been a better result for him, but unfortunately Mark Andrews unable to haul it in, but it's going to be a fake field goal. Justin Tucker, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I can't, can't say I was expecting that, but uh, I mean, worth the try, I guess, having a little fun here uh, late in the first half, but that's not going to result in anything positive for Benny as back to the offensive side the Jets go. And I got to say, on the side of Baltimore, uh, you know, I don't know what type of player you are, uh, Zero, when it comes to Madden, but I will say his Brees Hall a little gingerly getting up there. I wonder if injuries do affect on, injuries have effect on Madden, but 
if I'm if I'm Benny right now, I love the Ravens because me personally, I I use a linebacker. So having Roquan Smith there with the X Factor. Oh, oh, what a pick though! Oh. Van Noy with one hand. Somebody answer the door. It's a house call, and the Ravens with another touchdown. Oh my goodness! What a game out of Kyle Van Noy, and you see that user interception too. They get the pressure on. Flexing the muscles here in the booth is Benny. Wow, what a defensive play. That's the second one that's resulted in points for Benny and the Ravens. And uh, again, he's starting to add to this lead. Very unfortunate, again, if you're saying it's 5 on 5 but wow. Well, it's just like you pointed out, right? I mean, it's been the same story. Whenever Rodgers tries to drop back, he just doesn't have the mobility to then roll out to a side, right? So he then has to get rid of the ball quick when the pressure immediately comes through, and he just can't get it away quick enough. It's resulted in an incompletion. It's resulted in a pick. It's resulted in two sacks. Right now, Benny's having an absolute field day on defense. And, I mean, when you're then able to just take back the rock and then just keep running it, it's exactly what Benny said when he was here. He likes to drain clock. He's doing a great job of that. There's only three minutes left in the second quarter. And right now, this game doesn't seem close, but a deep shot down to Garrett Wilson. And wow, Rogers showing off the arm talent, has him on the fly route, and that's going to be a large gainer. Yeah, that's the, I mean, really the first positive play for Saints 5-1-5 here from Mount Aloysius. Um, I mean, yeah, they, that's why you have Aaron Rodgers right there. It's not to move his feet. It's to launch the ball downfield like that. So great positive play. And so long as you keep the ball here in your hands, it's going to result in points. Play action now. Rodgers deep back. Got some, has a man. That's Conklin. Going to get tackled at the three-yard line and another first down. And now things are looking a little bit more sketchy for the side of Benny. Conklin with a sweet out route. It's going to be able to get picked uh, up by Rodgers. And, you know, I want to see more of this. You have Aaron Rodgers, someone who's not as mobile. You would think you'd want to put him in shotgun and instead of under center with the play action. It wastes a lot of time and it lets the defense get close to you, especially when you have a blitz coming through. It's just an absolute counter to the play action. So, again, I want to see more of this out of St. 515 having Rodgers from the shotgun not running any play action. It's probably a better look for him. That seems to be the case. Rodgers in the pocket, has a man in the end zone. That's Garrett Wilson, or sorry. Uh, Corley. Co Corley. Corley. <laughs> Corley, sorry. Jerry, Garrett Wilson changed, changed his number, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. number um, five. Uh, it's okay, yeah. I don't know. He, he, is, he was, <laughs> yeah. He I know was 17, I swear Garrett Wilson was 17. Look, I mean, I'm just surprised because I thought uh, with Mike Williams and Alan Lazard on the Jets, I'd be seeing a little more of yeah. those two. But apparently that's just not the case because I believe that's also Corley's second reception. Yeah. I could be wrong. Yeah, right? I think so, you're right, yeah. I mean, uh, hey, I mean, he's getting some use out of him. So interesting, but we'll see as this game goes on right now. we got to focus on what Benny's going to do to respond. Well, he's got a seven-point lead, two-minute drill coming up. It looks like he's just going to go back to Henry, not going to try to force anything down the field here late in the first half. Henry on the outside, though, beats one. Look at the two! Gets the hurdle over top! Instantly tackled, but what a highlight reel play. Anyways, Derrick Henry doing what he does best, and you see that X Factor activated. You're going to start to see Derrick Henry take over in this game. Another first down. Can he get past that last safety? Tracks him over and tackled again, and Derrick Henry, are you kidding me right now? He's having an absolute day and a half right now, Zarin. He keeps running that halfback stretch, and right now, St. 515 just can't stop it. It's as simple as that with the truck, and now it's just going to give him back to him on the rock, one-on-one. -on -one. Don't even try to tackle Henry one-on-one, -on -one, especially with that X-Factor active. It's never going to work in a million years. Touchdown for Benny, and that's another one up for the Saints. Wow, great. I mean, it uh, looks like they're going to go for two as well. Lamar in the shotgun. Mind this little sweet play to Derrick Henry. There he is on the outside. Gets him. Gets the ball. And there's the two-point conversion. He's got the octopus. Just for fun. He's got the octopus. Yep. And, uh, yeah, Benny just, I mean, really leading on his best players. And right now, that's Derrick Henry. Has not used Lamar that much. I mean, it, I can't really discredit him when the run's working this well. You might as well just keep using it. I mean, the... Don't get me wrong, it's not usual you have someone with Lamar Jackson at the disposal and not really using them all that much, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's as simple as that. Right now, you're doing a really good job of that. Let's see how St. 515 will respond, though, back on the offense. Rodgers from shotgun. 
Pressure taking a little while. He's got all day in the pocket. Finds Garrett Wilson on a little in route, and he's going to be able to get the first down. Wilson, two catches for 68 yards. He's finding value out of him. And I think you've got to keep on going to him. Yeah, and you see all three timeouts still available for Saints 5-1-5. Has that player deep in the corner route. That's going to be a touchdown, the 20, the 10, all the way in. That's Corley, who's having a game of a lifetime right now. And still, Saints 5-1-5 hanging in there makes it a one-possession game. Like, I didn't know who he was before this game, but I'm not going to forget his name after. I mean, whoever Corley is absolutely incredible right now, and Saint 515 is finding insane value out of him. All of a sudden, what looked like a really big domination game from Benny is now, I mean, Saint 515 is just right back into the mix of things. So it's an interesting, it makes for an interesting second half, that's for sure. 100%, and I think, uh, I think Benny's going to approach this the same way. He's not going to use... You know, he's not going to get the ball downfield very quickly. He's just going to go back to Henry, wear the clock down, and I think he's just going to try to get out of this half with a uh, with an eight-point lead. And, and honestly, that two-point conversion could dictate the rest of this game so long as Saints 5-1-5 stays, stays in it. Right, absolutely. And I mean, I think I like, if I were you, I'd do the same thing. And people might be asking, well, there's only 42 seconds left. Why would you not try to save clock, maybe get down the field for a field goal? Right now, I just keep on running the ball. You're getting big gains out of Derrick Henry, as you see yet again. He's breaking so many tackles. Finally down. But again, I was going to make the argument, Benny's got three timeouts, Burns one right now. So he's got more than enough time with 37 seconds, even if he wants to run the ball. And I'm pretty sure he also gets the ball after halftime, because he was on defense for the first possession. Bouncing it to the outside this one's not going to go in his favor and now he might look for a passing play to try to convert on second and 12. Yeah that looks like it's going to be the case and, and don't blame him here you get a, a quick gain you can make it a third and short uh, run up and try to get a quick playoff and use that final timeout uh, under the 20 second mark there's the quick pass underneath it Zay Flowers going to get the first down now you use that timeout and now you just try to work the outside if you're going to continue passing the ball you try to work the outside at the very least you have a quick run maybe with Lamar get down spot the ball and try to kick a field goal as we're under 20 seconds. Lamar drops back, goes deep. Mark Andrews picked off! Sauce Gardner with a huge pick at the end of the half. I mean, it's probably not going to result in points, but a very preventative uh, interception anyways from the side of Saints. Uh, I mean, an efficient drive from Saint uh, 515 could have him in field goal range. He's got three timeouts with 15 seconds. If he can work the sideline, he might be able to get some value out of this, even with the ball at his own 27. So right now, let's see what Rodgers can do. Great pick by Sauce Gardner, by the yeah. way. One of the best cornerbacks in the league. I mean, honestly, not surprised he gets that one. And a penalty uh, going to happen as well. So, you know, again, I, I didn't actually think that uh, penalties happen that frequently in uh, Madden. I guess actually this is only the first one. So uh, I, I guess actually my, my yeah. point disproven there. <laughs> let's just see what St. 515 can do with 15 seconds left. He's got 10 seconds. He's looking like, I believe, Benny wants to call a little bit of an uh, a change the play call on defense. He's going to do exactly that, just trying to cover those deep thirds just to make sure that no play, big plays over the top happen. I'd imagine he's going to go for that cover four, if anything. Yeah, it looked like he, he wanted to, to drop back into more deep coverage, not allow that deep ball to go through. And yeah, yeah uh, timeout called by Saints 515. He's just going to run the clock out and get through the first half. No, actually, going to get the quick out. Not really going to do much, though. So now just 12 seconds. You, you you have the opportunity to use the middle of the field if you're if you're 515. And, uh, right now, not using it, but we'll see how he likes to approach this second down and eight. Probably has about two more plays before the clock runs out. Right, well, I mean, if uh, Zarin, I think you're absolutely right about that. If I were St. 515 right now, I'd try to get a big chunk play, use one of your timeouts. You can utilize the middle of the field. You have the two timeouts to do so, as you said. So, again, we'll see what strategy they cook up. Rodgers, under center, in the I form. You wonder if he's going to maybe play action. It's going to be exactly that, but it seems like St. 515 hasn't learned from his past mistakes, as it's going to be yet another sack resulting in that play action. Yeah, and that's going to end the half as well. Oh, no, I guess uh, 515 called another timeout. So he's going to still try to get this ball down the field a little bit. Very interesting play call. You're backed up all the way to your 21. Third in a million. Rodgers back, able to get the ball in, but not caught. And three seconds left. Now you punt the ball away, and that should finally do it, as it's going to be a legal man downfield. That penalty will be declined from the side of Benny. But 
Now you punt the ball away, clock a run out, game uh, half over. We're absolutely, and I mean, it should be Benny then coming out on the other side with the possession, so a great half from Benny so far. I love what he's been doing. I mean, you can't ignore the absolute insane, insane game that Derrick Henry's having. Yeah. And if I'm Benny, I'm gonna tell you what he's gonna do. He's just gonna come back from halftime and he's just gonna keep running that halfback stretch. It doesn't matter what side he puts it. He just stock two tight ends on the one side. And I mean, right now, St. 5-1-5 can't stop it. Simple as that. Yeah. Kickoff. Thomas Morstead gonna boot this one all the way to the front of the end zone, Hardy's going to return this one. So this one's coming out at least to the 20 and yeah, just across to the 22. So not a big return, but nevertheless, Benny can have an opportunity to add to this lead here up eight points. And there you go. Yeah, yeah. Exactly what I think anybody here could have predicted is going to happen right now, running the halfback stretch. They're actually going to go for the other side, a little bit of misdirection, but it's not going to work out in Benny's favor. Loss of five, a great defensive play from the Jets. As now Benny going no huddle. At no huddle, up the tempo. We'll see how 5-1-5 adjusts on the fly. Isaiah likely over the middle. Had that big game in week one in real life. Uh, two touchdowns for him. Very quiet week out of Mark Andrews. I know had some fantasy owners uh, pretty upset. <laughs> but there's uh, Isaiah likely here in Madden here. Our first bar broadcast here on the Saints stream. Of course, and Derrick Henry going to take this one back up the middle four yards. Benny just doing his thing early on. And again, Henry up the B gap, going to be able to get four yards out of it. If you can even muster four yards per carry, it still means you're going to get a first down at the end of the day. Up the middle again, this time up the A gap as Henry, he rumbles through and it's going to be third and inches. Already 17 carries. And these are five minute quarters, by the way. Uh, 17 carries, we're getting up to regular full game numbers. So. What a game from Derrick Henry's QB sneak, not actually going to get this. I got to think Benny decides to go for it here. About the same situation we were in, but the QB sneak did not work, and that is so rare in this game. And you got to be careful because when you have someone like Quinn Williams bearing down through the middle, especially when it's your quarterback taking it, you got to watch out for the fumble chance. Yeah. So a little bit of a risky call there. He's actually going to try to go for it again, but this time he beat CJ Mosley to the line, and he's going to be able to pick up the first. Yeah, that was looking tight. You saw 5-1-5 bring his safety all the way down, but not enough as Lamar able to sneak through, get that full yard. Back to Derrick Henry go. Great block from that Ravens offensive line allows for another six yards as uh, Benny continuing to wind this clock down as much as he can. Second and four here on the field. Right, I mean, it seems like no matter what, even when the opponent at this point, you know the run's okay. gonna happen, which is absolutely crazy. This is great mental game in, in my opinion because exactly, you leave the rest of the field wide open for nice plays like that. Kohler working the sideline, he's gonna be able to get out. And that was a chunk play. And I gotta say, what my point was going to be, when you are running the ball continuously nonstop on the halfback stretch in that single back formation, you're gonna get the opponent thinking it's just gonna be another stretch. He switches it up, goes for the pass instead. And it's an absolutely beautiful call by Benny. Absolutely, and, and if they are, if the opponent is manning the middle linebacker, which I, I believe he is. Actually, he might be, might be on the uh, defensive line. No, he's playing corner right now. Drop back in coverage. But anywho, if if you get that player using that middle linebacker, expecting the stretch every time, you're going to bring that middle linebacker all the way down to the line of scrimmage. That opens up the middle of the field. And right now, Benny's been taking advantage of that all game long. 30 seconds left. Lamar in the pocket. Going to find in the flat. Oh! oh, oh. That should have been a house call. That was almost going the other way. Very lucky escape as Justin Tucker gonna line up for his first field goal of the game. This one's just off a bit right, but gonna sneak through the upright. That's gonna be point scored nevertheless for Benny and what could have been so dangerous. I mean, we're talking to Benny before the game even started, and he said, look guys, I'm the type of guy that likes to hold the ball, drain the clock. I could be up three nothing and it wouldn't matter. So again, Benny, I'm even surprised that the uh, fake field goal came out or the fake PAT or whatnot came out in the first half. He seems like someone who will just take points as they come, doesn't try to go for many big risks and just holds the ball after that. So again, he's been doing a great job of it so far, just taking the three. Now let's see how St. 5-1-5 can come back. Again, Rodgers under center. I hope it's a run, because I really hate this play action that's going on from him. It's not working, but the run's not even gonna work as well. Brees Hall tackled for a loss of two. Yeah, they're really just 
finding ways to get pressure. I mean, pretty much all game, Benning's been using man-to-man -man defense. You only see him drop back into, into coverage on, you know, second and third and long situations. But even here, it's man-to-man -man again. I like the screenplay, though, from 5-1-5, able to get up past the 40-yard line and into a first down, as that's going to draw the end of the third quarter. Five more minutes for 5-1-5 to bring this one back, but Benny very much in control here. I mean, a great game so far. An absolutely electric second quarter with 29 yeah. points scored between the two of them. So again, it seems like uh, for St. 5-1-5, you know, in the fourth now, he has to start to open things up. He's going to do just that. Finds Garrett Wilson on a slant route, and he's going to be able to take it through the first down marker up to the, f I believe, the 35. Yeah, you see Rodgers, I mean, 5-1-5s have way more like success in the passing game. I, I, I don't know why he's not utilizing Aaron Rodgers a little bit more, especially on these quick little in routes from those slot receivers. You see Garrett Wilson on, on your outside left. I'd like to target him here in man-to-man. -man. Ooh, Ooh, risky wow. pass, but it's actually going to sneak through for Mike Williams, and that's going to be all she wrote on that play. It's going to be a New York Jets touchdown. St. 5-1-5 right back into the mix. Yeah, he's going to go for two as well to try to make this a, a three-point game. He d I mean, kind of. He did have Garrett Wilson there on the sec on the third level, uh, but able to sneak it through. And again, almost knocked down, almost intercepted. Anyways, but. 5-1-5, able to hang on into this game. He's just been lurking all game long. And now, two-point conversion. This could dictate the outcome of the game. Rodgers in the shotgun. Brees Hall to his left. Rodgers drops back. Quick throw in. Broken up. That's Washington with the breakup. And that stops Corley from having yet another impactful play. And again, that might be one of the big plays of the game is right now keeping it at a touchdown, uh, you know, possession game. You can't tie with a field goal anymore. So huge for the side of Benny. And now I'm assuming we're going to be right back on the quota, just burning clock with that halfback stretch. Yeah, this is going to be the game plan. And, you know, you get, you get to a third and short. I wouldn't even be surprised if Benny starts to you know work the play action in a little bit more especially with Lamar Jackson's running capabilities but Derrick Henry continuing to do his thing and here comes that little shuffle play that you see to that tight end is he going to hit it no Lamar going to keep ha looking for that player on the second level but just enough to get into the first down is that ball is going to get fumbled out of bounds but nevertheless it's out of bounds and out of play so first down I think as a defensive uh, player, at least in my heart, I hate when fumbles go out of out of bounds because it's like, oh man, he coughed up the ball, but it rolls forward, it goes out of bounds, and they get those yards. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous in my in my uh, thoughts. But again, that's just not how the game of football works. And right now, it's definitely working in Benny's favor. Third and seven, though, and now he has to try to find a little bit of a big play to keep himself on this possession. Yeah, all three timeouts still here. You're going to start to see them get used. Third down. Surprised 5-1-5 didn't use it right away. Intercepted over the middle. It's McKinley. Able to pick it off. Just a blind spot for Lamar and Benny. And all of a sudden, this spells danger for Benny. As 5-1-5 has possession. 40 yards, three timeouts. Well over two minutes to go. And Brees wow. Hall up the middle. Wide open. Brees Hall going all the way into the end zone. And 5-1-5 for the first time this game is going to take the lead. The right guard's going to absolutely pull that tackle to the right side. And I mean, there's just a giant gap through the B gap. And Brees Hall is just going to hit it through like a cannon. He's going to be able to score now with 5-1-5 in the lead. And he's going to be able to find Brees Hall for the octopus as well. And now if you're Benny, all of a sudden, it spells a lot of danger. You might have regretted burning so much time in the first three quarters because you don't got a lot to work with. It's it's really just been mistakes from both sides that have costed them points. And right. otherwise, both teams have done pretty well offensively. I mean, I'd even give the edge to Benny just a little bit um, as far as like defensive play, but it's really been the mistakes that have been turned around for, for points for each of these guys. And now Benny got bit by it most recently. We'll see how he likes to approach this. Already into the solo shotgun. Oh, man. Oh. He really likes hitting that crosser up. The problem yeah. is someone's always there to either light up the receiver or, again, blindside, pick it off. Yeah. So we're going to see what he does this time. 
Going to probably run with Lamar. No, passing it late. He's going to go to his check down. Third and six, though. Not very much yardage gained. And now as the two-minute warning rolls around, Benny going to have to go a lot pass, a lot more pass heavy. I wouldn't expect another run out of him, at least on this possession. Yeah, you got to think two downs for sure. But there it goes the other way. Sauce Gardner had a man open the middle. Gardner trying to take it all the way back, and he does. And that might be game. Uh, yeah. A beautiful play there by Sauce Gardner to undercut the route. And I mean, it's just an amazing read by him, Benny, with not the best pass as well. I mean, it's just going to be a little bit of two sides that help each other out in the favor of St. 515. Going up by 10 right now. And I've seen a lot of things happen in Madden. I get a minute 53. You know, that is actually still plenty of time in the case of Madden. Anything can happen because, I mean, we saw this comeback happen. And, I mean, no time, honestly. Yeah. So, again, the game's, I wouldn't say it's over yet, but it's definitely looking so dire and dangerous. You can't have another mistake like that or else it will actually truly be game. Yeah, and the, the thing is, too, like, I, I feel like Benny doesn't have to do too much there. You, you know, you were rocking with Henry all game long, and now you're playing solo out of out of the shotgun. Like, it doesn't make much sense. When you had the time, you, you had the ability to use Lamar, but great play over the middle. That's going to be Mark Andrews with a huge gain, and that's exactly what Benny needed. Now with a minute 30 left, still three timeouts. He's got to get a score quick, whether that's a touchdown or a field goal, and uh, you're going to see these deep routes start coming into play. Had that player open on the outside. Might be too late. No! Mark Andrews with a huge catch down to the 12. It's going to be an absolutely beautiful read there by Benny finding Andrews on the corner. And again, like I said, anything possible. Benny looking like he might have a chance at a score here. Lamar rolling to his right. Has to throw this one away. Be grounding, I not take the sack. But is it intentional grounding? Yes, I believe he was not out of the pocket. So therefore, intentional grounding comes into play there. Unfortunate as now we're looking at a second and 25 for Benny. Yeah, second and a mile. Has the middle of the field still. Has that player open. That's eight flowers. So he moves up a little bit. Four downs. You got to hurry, though. Lamar Jackson still solo in the backfield. Three players out to his right. Two receivers out to his left. The cross route comes in, but there's Andrews in the end zone. And that's a nice touchdown. Uh, you should just kick one, probably. <laughs> yeah, it looks like that's going to be the case. I mean, I absolutely love to see that. The cross route just able to drag C.J. Mosley down in towards to cover that, and it leaves uh, Andrews just wide open in the seam. It's going to find him. It's an absolutely beautiful play. And uh, like I said now, Benny within three. He's actually going to go for an onside kick here. I mean... With three timeouts, I guess with how productive both teams have been on on off. Oh no way! You gotta be oh. kidding me. Okay, I was about to say that would have been absolutely crazy if he recovers the onside kick, but that's not going to be the case. And this should most likely do it here, as I believe you can just kind of run the ball. I, I guess I guess it's not technically over yet. If they need to, yeah. they need to. He needs to burn all of Benny's timeouts first. Uh, but if I were Saint 515, I'm running the ball to burn all three timeouts here. See if I can even get any of the clock to go down as well through that. It is going to be Brees Hall up the middle. And again, like I said, five yards away from probably winning this game right now is all you need is a first down. You can burn the last timeout, two timeouts, and then take a knee. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. If you prevent this first down, you give yourself a chance. But such a tall order with how both teams have been running the football. And there goes Brees Hall at the 30 to the 20. Washington chasing him to the 10, the five. And that's going to do it. It's going to be Brees Hall sealing this game. As What a comeback from 5-1-5, down 14 early on. Just really bided his time, counted on the mistakes of Benny. And it's going to be a 1-0 series lead for Mount Aloysius here. Right, I mean, look, we were treated to quite the series, uh, or, or quite the game to start the series. 74 points so far. I mean, it's definitely been a fun one to cover. Absolutely. And, well, Morstead's going to put this ball away. It's not not impossible, but man, it's just such a tough task here for Benny to do anything. Can't burn any time, so he's just going to let that ball roll right through the back of the end zone. And we're going to see a lot of deep options here. And well, one interception, which we've seen a couple of already, could seal the game officially. Right now, Benny, 42 seconds. Jackson dropping back, has a man. It's going to be Aglor, but no! An almost tip drill on the side of the Jets. They almost come away with another interception but it will fall to the ground instantly as an incomplete with 34 seconds left. 
Benny taking his sweet time to cook up a play, needs something big and needs it now. Yeah, and you're really going to see five on five just play these deep routes. It does look like it might be more of a cover two here. Yeah, they're, they're going to play man, man to man. Actually got lost in the middle of the field. That's Aguilar. Can't hold on to the ball. Had full possession. Former first round pick Nelson Aguilar continuing the struggle even in a video game. Yeah, I was going to say Aguilar, even in real life, being a, <laughs> a target of uh, needing some of that grip boost. But yes. in game as well, I see he's not doing very well uh, in catches in traffic. Now going to Andrews, that should be picked off. Quite errand pass from Lamar Jackson. Benny not going to be very happy about that one. I believe that's Sauce Gardner's third pick of the day. Yes. House one of them as well, I believe, to seal the almost pretty much seal the game. So Gardner having an absolute monstrosity of the game, just as I'd expect. That's going to be an innocent knee there from Rodgers, and that's going to do it. Burn the last two timeouts, take a knee. This one's done in the books, and it's going to be St. 5-1-5 with a series lead going up 1-0. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think if you're Benny, you just got to mentally reset and, and really try to minimize the mistakes. What and, and go back to what made you successful in the first half to begin with, right? It was, you know, running the football, first of all, but it was really just baiting that, that crossing route the whole time and hitting that guy on the second and third level. And he just completely strayed away from that, tried to play the crossing routes, tried to use Lamar out of the pocket, and it just did not work at all in the second half, and it ended up costing him. As it's going to be St. 5-1-5 for Mount Alo Aloysius um, with the 1-0 series lead, as you mentioned. And right now, uh, very much in control of this series, uh, and, and Benny needs to just reset. Yeah, I mean, you explained it perfectly there. I think the mistake is going back to that crosser route. He did it a couple too many times. I believe was picked off maybe twice doing that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. twice? I believe it was, yeah. Regardless, again, you know, that was definitely where the issue stemmed from. And then through there, I believe, just not able to mentally reset, like you said. Mm -hmm. Started making riskier throws, riskier play calls. He started having this little thing where he would just keep Jackson in an empty backfield for almost the second half, it felt like. And he was almost running the exact same play. Yeah. He'd hot route maybe one person, but at the same time, you know, your opponent's going to pick up on that at this level, and I think you got to give it to St. 5-1-5. You did a great job of noticing that and uh, adjusting. Absolutely, yeah. Um, g great adjustment in the second half, and that's, you know, you go into halftime, it, you don't have a big halftime in Madden, but you have the opportunity to reset anyways, and uh, it, it seemed like you really did. So Mount Aloysius with a... 1-0 series lead here as uh, you know going into game two w do you think Benny should stick with Baltimore or should he look elsewhere perhaps to Philadelphia well you know I would usually say that uh, for the type of game plan that he likes to do uh, you would just I, I would honestly think stick with Baltimore just because the way he runs with Derrick Henry he loves using that truck again um can find that momentum through the middle. But to be fair, now that I'm really thinking about it, if he does love bouncing it to the outside, I mean, you got Saquon over on the Eagles, right? Mm -hmm. So it does feel like maybe that is the better call because when it comes to Lamar, he's not very known for being able to have that accuracy, especially that mid to deep field accuracy sure. that someone like Jalen Hurts could potentially bank off of especially when you have a second receiver like Devonta Smith who can be that volume guy in order to then take AJ Brown as the deep threat and make him you know make his place count 100 percent yeah and and you can't forget about Dallas Goddard either very Absolutely. reliable uh, tight end option for the Eagles but we'll get more into that here in just a few moments as uh, we're getting ready and set up for game two don't go anywhere we'll be right back
What's up, Saints Nation? We're back after the break. Patrick Smoke Chambers joined by Zarin. And now we're going to be moving into our second game of Madden. We saw the first one being taken by Saint 515 over our guy, Benny. So we'll see if Benny can mentally reset and hopefully take the second one. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's going to be a pretty simple reset for him. And, well, here he comes actually with the Eagles. And I don't necessarily hate this in... in you know, it's going to be pretty a pretty similar offense, just with a slightly better throwing quarterback, as well as uh, you get that extra star receiver too. And uh, he talked about AJ Brown. He's going to use him a lot, especially on the deep routes, as you mentioned before. As he's just going to fix up the depth chart, make sure everybody's in the proper place. But yeah, you, you see, you see uh, Jalen Hurts going to be used quite a lot, I think, for this one, especially rolling out maybe those bootleg plays, play action as well. Right, and I mean, I was kind of talking to our guy at the half, and it was kind of the same thing. He was kind of saying the whole, the, uh, all the stuff that we were saying at the break was that you can get the same value that you had with Henry, especially when you love running that halfback stretch. You get that same value out of Saquon. I mean, maybe even more, because he's a faster back, right? Yeah. And again, he also has great catching potential as well, better than Derrick Henry. You can put him on a wheel route if you need something right on, on the other side. Uh, and again, uh, there's just this big of a passing threat if not more you got Dallas Goddard so you're not really losing too much in the tight end department and again we I was even saying this before the stream started that you know you got that volume guy in Devonta Smith and you know he can really that was the problem is that he couldn't really go to Zay Flowers all that much everybody was locking him down there wasn't a second receiver to go to Aguilar dropped two big yeah. balls earlier uh really costed him so he could only really have that cross route to go down the seam on Mark Andrews it wasn't working out just like how this play isn't going to work out, it's going to be the tackle for a loss of five and a great play. Yeah, well, one thing I'd like to notice, and if you notice on your screen there, Benny actually moving CJ Gardner-Johnson from the strong safety position down to the primary middle linebacker. So uh, trying, to, trying to get a little bit more speed with that middle linebacker as well as a bit of catching ability too to kind of cover up um, the, you know, the middle of the field. And that's going to be a big gain. No, dropped by Garrett Wilson and already a strong strong defensive stop from Benny and now it's a third and long. And a great break up there by Darius Slade just able to get the hand in there to break up the play before Garrett Wilson was going to come away with a big gainer. Rogers shotgun he's going to be going back and it's going to be a near miss should have been picked off by Blankenship but it's just not going to happen. However, it won't be too big of a deal. Benny is still going to receive the ball now because Saint will have to punt. Yeah, big uh Big relief there if you're Saint 515. Able to get away. That's Cooper DeGene all the way back. Just about, just about a five yard return is uh, two clock is gonna get turned on. And that's well, that's Benny's play style. And he's he's shown that in game one. Let's see if he can get right back to it here on his first offensive possession. The thing I gotta imagine though is that Saint 51 or uh, yeah 515 has seen this all last game. Probably knows what's gonna happen. So instead, Barkley's going to just be able to Saquon go straight through the middle. He goes in a little bit of a misdirection. Think it's gonna be a halfback stretch. It is, but Barkley then takes it on his own up the middle. Finds a gain of nine, second and one, right up. Yeah, really interesting strategy here already because we saw a lot of the stretch plays uh, and the outside zone plays from uh, Derrick Henry and that Baltimore offense. But now it's uh, we're seeing a lot of these inside runs with Saquon Barkley in this Eagles offense. So different approach. I think Benny has practiced with both, and he's obviously come up with a solid game plan. Nice little flat route there. It's going to be stole. Going to get tackled down about four yards deep past the line of scrimmage. It's going to be a middle of the road second down here. And now attacking with that same halfback stretch. You wonder motion into A.J. Brown, just trying to get a block maybe downfield. It's not going to end up working, uh, at least from Brown's perspective, as Saquon's not going to be able to get downfield. He will be stopped third and three now. And you really wonder, this is a little bit awkward right now for Benny. You, you necessarily don't necessarily want to run the halfback stretch. You're not really guaranteed three yards. He's going to have to pass. There he is. And there he is, Saquon on the check down, able to get the first, but not before he gets hit-sticked. Well, sorry, you got the first, then you got hit stick. You just got to watch out for the fumble chance. But 
luckily for Benny, did not happen. Yeah, it was a good safe play. You see Kenneth Gainwell in the backfield now. Jalen Hurts gonna get this one out quick to Smith, but double coverage. It's gonna be Sauce Gardner on the outside. Three interceptions last game. Gonna break that one up, and now we got a second and long. Shotgun now for Jalen Hurts. We'll see what he likes to do. Trips right. Can have that one player on the hot route left side, AJ Brown, but insignificant as it's Saquon dropping that one now to a third and ten. Right, and a little bit of a dangerous position right now if you're Benny. Uh, you know, you wonder what the play calling and the decisions we've seen so far, if he really has recovered mentally from that first game. He's going to have that hot route now on AJ Brown on a zig. He loves to use that, but the problem is the opponent's already picked that up and he's double covered it. Honestly, lucky that pass didn't probably get intercepted. And again, now it's fourth and six. Going for it's risky, but it seems like Benny, he's going to choose to do just that. And yeah, we're back on the 50 yard line again. You can see two crossing routes coming into your right. AJ Brown going to hit a quick uh, zig on the left, and then you're going to have a, a third level. Uh, post route from Dallas Goddard. That could be the way he elects to do it. No, it's going to be Devontae Smith on that late in, able to get the ball in his hands and in for the first down. Great conversion there from Benny. Right, and now the inside zone run. You know, good for good on Benny. He gets the job done, has a new set of downs, and he's going to use them well. Saquon bouncing it to the outside, makes a man miss, trying to try to get one more. Can't beat the last man to the house, but nevertheless, a great chunk play from Saquon Barkley. Shades of the first game with Derrick Henry as he finds a big gain on the run. Yep. Saquon significant back to Kenneth Gainwell. Just able to get four is CJ Mosley. That user player is going to be there for the stop. That's probably a guy that doesn't get talked about much anymore is CJ Mosley. Obviously coming over from Baltimore however many years ago. Very underrated player on that Jets defense and uh, you know obviously they think high, highly of him in, in Madden as uh, you know a, a, a high decently high rated player anyways but very useful in that uh, Jets defense. Well, I mean, he's kind of like the leader, uh, I mean, in real life, at least, on that Jets defense. He's always the one communicating. He's always the first guy to really take anything on, you know, his, uh, on, the, on the chin in terms of what's his fault or whatnot. So he's, he's a really good leader. And, I mean, it's no surprise that when you got a guy like C.J. Mosley leading your defense, why the Jets are so successful. Hurts rolling out to his right. He's going to try to see if he can even pick up any yardage. Gets, I believe, one yard to make it third and nine. But... It's looking a little bit bleak right now for Benny. He needs a big play here. He's going with that double crosser. He really likes that. But he's actually going to throw into double coverage again. It's going to be Sauce Gardner. This one should be housed. However, if he can just make Hertz miss. No, not quite. Hertz does a good job of at least delaying the time for Gardner to not go straight to the end zone. O-line comes in for the tackle. But nevertheless, just another errand throw by Benny. And I just didn't like the way that looked at all. It just, it was picked up again. We were talking about how he pays attention too much to the crosser route. He should look more maybe to the second or third level when he makes that linebacker go in. And he just doesn't pick it up there. He's going to get picked off again. St. 515 working right back to it. It's going to be Tyler Conklin. Absolutely burns his man. And he's going to have a quick six on the board. That's tough. <laughs> That's a very tough sequence for Benny. Um, again, forced a throw that wasn't there. Uh, tried to fit it into double coverage, and he's throwing the same side of the field as Sauce Gardner. You got to be aware. That's four interceptions in five quarters. Uh, it, it's just you, you can't make that mistake again. And, and you talked about the crossing route. We're going to harp on it a little bit more. Um, you got to bait it out, and you, you know you got Jalen Hurts. You got good legs there. And you have those those deeper options as well because the safeties are starting to come down too. So, um, yeah, just unfortunate the force to play that was there, and, and you know the Jets uh, as well as Saint Five One Five are able to take advantage. Back on offense though, get back to your game. This is where you can't panic. You got to stay focused. Get back to what was successful early on in this game and last game as well. And. Uh, Right now, back to it he goes, Saquon with a nice little three yard run. And I think what I want to see more out of Benny as the X Factors up is exactly that, you know, just work the, a little deeper. He finds A.J. Brown over the middle. 
honestly, what I was also going to pick up on is you have two star wide receivers. Let's just try to avoid Sauce Gardner. We've been giving way too much attention to his side. Make Saint work with the fact that you need to use that secondary corner and, and make help over there. Because right now, he's just kind of letting Sauce Gardner just user lurk his players. Hurts bouncing it out to the left. He's going to find great value off of that run. No fumble there. I don't know what that was. <laughs> but okay, Benny able to find some good yardage out of that. Oh, my God. Madden doing Madden things. That's so funny. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, you like to see him use Jalen Hurts a little bit more. You get him outside of the pocket. Now you you force the defense to make a decision. Are we going to attack Jalen Hurts or are we going to protect the, the deeper ball? And uh, he's able to get a good first down right there. Hurts drops back, looking deep. Has that player? No. I don't like this. Wow, in the triple coverage. Very risky throw. Gets away with that one again. Now we're down to a third and nine. Potentially two down territory. A little bit far for a field goal, but uh, anyways, here we go. And again, the big play is going to be A.J. Brown, Sauce Gardner. You see him matched up on that go route. Now he's going to audible it out. It's not going to be what happens. Does he have Brown over the middle? He maybe does, but it's just not a great read. Picked off by C.J. Mosley. And again, I can understand where he thought maybe because Sauce Gardner was in zone coverage, doesn't stick with AJ. He has him for about maybe half a second, but he leads the ball too far into the middle. And Mosley's there on the mid read on the zone, and he just makes him, he just makes him uh, miss there. It's just a bad mistake. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're coming up on halftime right here, and that was almost a nice ball to Garrett Wilson, but just out of the reach. I mean, you got, you got to go into halftime and just, I mean, fully reset. It, it's like, okay, reevaluate what's working, what isn't. Clearly, throwing the ball to the middle of the field is not. Um, and obviously, Gardner playing on the, on the right side. You throw it deep left, you throw it mid left, you throw it close left, and just avoid the middle of the field right now because it is just not working out whatsoever. Rogers dropping back, throwing a really risky pass, but a diving catch able to save Rogers from what would have been an interception there. A great play by St. 515. Wide receiver bailing out Rogers. Let's see what he does here. Dropping back, pressure from the right side. It's going to reach him, but not until the ball was moving forward. It won't go down as a fumble, incomplete, but a good defensive play nonetheless. Yeah, and, they, and that's what that's what Benny needs to continue to do, put pressure on the quarterback. We saw in the first half of the first game him putting so much pressure on the QB, getting the ball out early, and there's a pressure again from the outside. Intercepted by White. Back he goes. This could go all the way. One more lineman to beat. Alan, Mike Williams chasing him all the way. Cross to the 10, the 5 into the end zone and Benny with such a morale boosting play to get him back into this game both mentally and on the scoreboard fantastic play from him and he needed that a great job of covering the seam by Devin White coming from Tampa Bay over to Philadelphia and I mean that's exactly what I mean they got him for in real life to make plays like that he's such a great linebacker to cover zone as well as just to put so much pressure on the blitz he's so fast and honestly his zone coverage is just amazing if you watch film of him from Tampa this year, I believe he is the second uh, starting linebacker. So again, you don't really see too much of him, surprisingly. But again, it seems like Benny's seen just enough out of him. And he's able to get the pick six. So right now, with a minute 36 left in the half, let's see if St. 515 can get the tempo going. Rodgers alone in the backfield. Brees Hall lining up as a slot receiver. is going to be available on the outside, too. Brees Hall has that burst of speed. Oh. What a spin move around Blankenship. Round White, round that last safety as well. Finally taken down. It's Devin White with the tackle. But the gain is so, so damaging. And just like that, already in field goal range, as well as touchdown range for Aaron Rodgers. Left side, Brees Hall on the screen. Again! Oh, yes! oh, Devin White, it's going back the other way. Cross the 50, the 30. Now, Brees Hall chasing, no one around. It's Devin White all the way with the pick six in the most unlikely fashion ever. And, and Benny finds a way to take the lead. I mean, it's just going to be the same thing. He's going to fake the rush with White, and then he just drops back into coverage, lurks, undercuts the route, and finds yet another pick six. 
I mean, there's something else to say. That was an absolutely beautiful play out of Benny here. And if you came to me and told me that in this second game, Benny was going to score more points off the defense than on the offense in the first half, I would have called you absolutely crazy. But here we are, and right now, you got to think, you, the guy's got to be feeling really good. Yeah, I mean, like, what, what can you even do if you're saying 5 one 5 also? I mean, you're, you're running a screenplay. you got three offensive linemen in front of your receiver. No way that should have ever been picked off going the other way. But what a fantastic read out of Benny, able to get the ball and down to the end zone for some points. So you have no offensive points, but you know what? you got the lead somehow. So that's that's all you can really focus on. Aaron Rodgers is going to throw this one away. That's going to be grounding. So they're going to be pushed back way, way deep down to the seven yard line as uh, well he's got a lot of work cut out for him now under a minute to go and you would have thought he had that crossing route but again it was Devin White on the user he just fakes the rush again and he drops back into coverage and he was able to cover it not this time though it will be Tyler Conklin with the catch but again third and 18 I mean Benny's just got to play prevent here not give up that first down or any big plays he can just kind of take what the offense gives him hopefully find a guy in the middle and just be able to tackle him before he gets that line so again if I'm Benny here I just keep on doing what you're doing so far just cover the deep routes make sure you give up nothing deep Rogers is going to run for it I thought maybe a fumble was going to happen but no an illegal forward pass as he was past the line of scrimmage by the time the ball was released moving forward so it will be marked as an incompletion and that's why the flag comes through fourth and 23 it's got to be a punt here Morstead the Pro Bowl punter booting this one all the way back to Cooper DeGene see if they can get a return looks like they get some yards can they get this block on Mosley nice spin move up towards the 50 down to the 35 or the 40 yard line rather has a great return now already in field goal territory. Now you can take your time if you're Benny, right? You just run the football, drain the clock all the way down as much as you can and kick the field goal. And he's going to be more than happy with getting his first offensive points and going up by two scores at the end of the half. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess he just kind of wants stuff quick. To be fair, if the opponent's thinking that might be what he's going to do, you might opt to go the opposite way. And that's more what I want to see out of. He's not throwing to the side of Sauce Gardner. He makes DJ Reed have to try to make a play on Devonta Smith, and that's a mismatch. you got to kind of target that side a lot more. Sauce has just made so many plays off that right side. you got to go back to it. It's going to be exactly what Benny does yet again, this time to Saquon, working the sideline. He's going to have 27 seconds left and with the timeout he's in great field position yeah avoid the middle of the field to get again I'm looking at Devontae Smith on your top left looking for that ball he had him oh somehow that wasn't picked off he somehow sneaks it through well that's going to be a touchdown for Benny and the Eagles oh my goodness I mean a little bit of a risky play there but Hertz just puts enough touch on the ball there to loft it over the safety dropping back into coverage and Goddard outstretched hands is going to be able to find him a great play there from both Hertz and Goddard puts Benny up by two scores going into the half yeah 20 seconds the Jets have all three timeouts but we saw this in game one too it, it, it wasn't able to really do much with the ball and with the time and now down to 18 may just elect to run out the clock but seeing what we saw in game number one it won't matter and they're going to try to force this ball down the field but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case Rodgers lines up under center going to hand it off to Brees Hall get stuck on that offensive lineman can't break that second level tackle Jets still calling a timeout though and with 13 seconds I just I don't really understand this yeah, again, it just kind of looks weird. I mean, if I'm Benny right now, exactly, just make sure your safeties are deep. Maybe go into, honestly, I thought maybe a cover four, but a cover two is going to be what he likes to choose. Slay not able to have his man. Wilson working the sideline. He's able to get out at the eight-second mark. And honestly, I got to say, not a fan of that defensive play call there. It just didn't really make much sense to me. I at least want to have three safeties playing prevent, or sorry, three players playing prevent and make uh, make Saint with four seconds left work the under uh, the, the first level routes right make him take those small gains and I mean he's I guess then he's done a good job of that because now forcing a long long field goal will this one go through yes it actually does Inc incredible kick there I know field goals in Madden are a little bit scuffed sometimes so yeah <laughs> but I mean I guess when you got Greg the legs are line on your side you're not truly out of anything. Yeah. Um, 
That's a great nickname to have if you're a kicker. And if you do have the nickname, you're probably a good kicker. So great kick. Nevertheless, still a two possession game for the likes of Saint 515, who's up 1 0 in the series. If you're just tuning in, it's Benny for the St. Clair Saints down 0 1. But up by 11 here as we kick off the second half, it's going to be Shipley taking this one up to the 23 yard line and a loud brunch to end that play. You got to think the halfback stretch is coming. Yep, there it is. I see, like, you see it in the, within the three plays of the book. You already know what Benny's going to decide to use. Saquon bouncing it to the outside. Not going to find very much yardage, though, for his effort. Second and nine. And I will say, for someone who I said before, I thought was going to get as much value as Derrick Henry. Right now, that has just not been the case. And it probably has to also do with the fact that, you know, the players on the other side of the field in St. 515 might be a little bit used to the run, but not that time, as Barkley's going to break through into the secondary, and he gets the first. Yeah, that was the first real big run of the game for Saquon, as he's going to get the ball again, trying to get past that defensive end. Not going to happen, though. That's going to be the Jets with the tackle here, just three yards past the line of scrimmage. Hurts going to line up under center. A.J. Brown on the right side. This is going to be an inside run. I didn't actually see the play. Not a fake jet. Brown motions to the left. It's going to be an extra blocker there for Barkley, but no. Great penetration from St. 515 to get that tackle, and now a third and short. And I almost want to say that either there weren't enough linemen on that side or someone missed an assignment, but now it's going to be Hurts rolling right. Hits Goddard on this left side on the out route. That was a good read there. You saw the corner drop back into that cover three coverage, I believe it was, and uh, able to find that open space with Jalen Hurts. Now back to Barkley we go. Up the middle, great blow-up pressure. That's going to be that Jets defensive line and standing tall again against Saquon. And, well, they didn't really do much against Derrick Henry last game, but they're doing a lot right now against Saquon. Quick throw out to Kenneth Gainwell. He's going to make a man miss, tries to juke inside, but a great tackle there by the linebacker. As now, first and 10, nevertheless, great gain by Gainwell. Back to the running game for Benny. See what he does in this halfback stretch. Barkley, bouncing it to the outside, makes one man miss, and now he's going to try to get through the secondary, but it's not going to happen. Nevertheless, a pick with seven, great gain. Good gain. This is the kind of tempo that we like to see from Benny, just methodically running the ball down the field, burning that clock yet again. Play action moved to Stoll as uh, not going to go anywhere. Going to be a third and short situation. Hurry up offense. Barkley, here comes that stretch run once again. Can the Jets read this? Hand off to Barkley. Up the middle, tries to cut it back. Will finally get tackled, but more than enough for the first down. And Benny looking prime to get some more points here. And that was good at a Saquon. You know, the hesitation, he almost wanted to shoot the B-gap, gets locked up, but he doesn't panic, doesn't bounce it into the inside where the linebackers are coming through, bounces it out to the C-gap and finds the hole. So it was a great play by Saquon and a good run by Gainwell as well. Benny sticking true to what he said earlier. He's drained the third quarter completely out now and up by two possessions. Again, it's mad and anything can happen. If anything, last game was a real showcase of that. But you can't look at the score right now and think Benny's looking pretty good right now. Yeah, th this is the kind of control that um, he had in the first half of game one and he kind of just lost grasp of that in the second half. But Right now, he's in control yet again for the second straight game. Now it's up to him to hang on and avoid those mistakes. And now, half back stretch down to Barkley, hitting the C gap, but he's going to get stuffed by CJ Mosley. A great job there by Mosley. Stops Saquon in his tracks, third and two. We'll see what Hurts and Barkley can cook up here. Hurts on center, ends off the Barkley. Going to get the first down and more. Gets another spin move. Can't quite wow. make it into the end zone, but going to get awfully close. Going to be a first and goal from the two-yard line. Right, I mean, with tackling like that, you got to assume that Robert Stahl is not very happy on that side of the Jets' uh, <laughs> corner. And now Barkley straight through the B-gap, finds the hole. It's a touchdown for the Eagles and for Benny. Yeah, that's going to make it a three-possession game. Very important in the late stages here with just under four minutes left to go. It's going to be a nice kick. And through the upright, so 18-point lead for Benny here with the series on the line, looking prime to take this one. 
Saint 515 certainly not out of it yet as we saw last game. Right I mean 357 all it takes is mental uh, reset for Saint 515 and he needs a little bit of mental panic out of Benny but again that's what happened last game you can't cut him out of this if you just said so it'll be interesting to see what Benny goes for here based on how many people are on the line I was going to say he probably opted to go for that mid blitz I form it's going to be Rogers off to Hall Brees able to spin but he's not going to get quite past that defender at least and not until the help comes through from I believe it was CJ Gardner Johnson Great play from the secondary, and they're able to stop it. It's yeah. five. This I form is going to be really tough to uh, run. No, no way. Up, but Brees Hall somehow gets free, almost gets through that last line of defense as well. Not going to happen. And now you see the Jets starting to slow it down. And once they get into this shotgun here, well, no, they're going to stick with the I form and try to get this ball. I believe that's a band of Kanda in the backfield now. As Rodgers drops back, looking deep, there's that crossing around over the middle, but Conklin can drag it in. As Garrett Wilson, you saw over the 25-yard the line, was wide open, but Alexis throws to Conklin. Now Rodgers solo in the backfield. We've seen that twice now. The first time the diving catch did come through, but it seems like Rodgers' accuracy has been a little lacking, at least, uh, you know, recently. We've seen two throws there where they could have been big gainers. One was, to be fair, but really would have wanted that second one. Pasco's incomplete, third and 10 right now. Rogers, I form, going play action. Has pressure rolling in from both sides. He's going to find M McCollum though, not the right player. I was almost gonna say Conklin, but a great play from Benny gets the pick. And I mean, man, if you're saying 515 right now, you haven't been making the greatest throws this game and it's been showing in the score. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just nothing going on offense really. And those 14 points from Benny on the defensive side have dictated this game. You take away those 14 points, all of a sudden it's a it's a heck of a lot closer. And you know, with three minutes left in the way that Benny and these Eagles are running the football, I don't see a way in which uh, Saint 515 is ever going to get the ball back. <laughs> Kenneth Gainwell bouncing to the outside, cutting back inside, makes a man miss. I thought he was almost there. He almost made a move back to the outside and made the secondary miss again. Can't quite keep his footing though. Huge gain. It's going to be first down again. Two minute warning. And right now, Benny looking very dominant. Indeed, two minute warning gets that first down. You're going to start to see St. 515 burn those timeouts as we move it forward. Gainwell in the backfield, not able to get much, so a decent enough stop. And well, it looks like St. 515 is just going to mail it in. So no timeout's going to be burned from his side. And uh, this should be ball game here. It's Gainwell looking for that second first down for himself. Not quite. But well, one more is going to finish off the game. We'll get a kneel down. And we're going to a game three. Right, I mean, that's, that's really it, to be honest. I mean, there, again, like you said, the run has just been so effective. It won't be this time. Quinn Williams able to get in there for the tackle for loss. But again, you would think that Benny, you know, you just take the field goal here. I wouldn't imagine you fake it. But we'll see off the leg of Jake Elliott what Benny can do. Wait, you can, you can hold it? I think you can hold it. It's perfect because you can just drain the clock even more. So he's <laughs> got about 10 seconds that he can work around here with. He's going to finally let it release. Kick is up. And by the looks of it, oh. it's off the crossbar, but it is good. Wow, 60-yard field goal from Jake Elliott. Barely squeaks through, but it does nonetheless. I absolutely love that feature of holding the kick as well. well I had no idea that was a thing. absolutely what you do in thing. real life, right? Yeah. I mean, you burn those seconds. I, I, was that always a thing of Madden, or is it just new this year? Do you know? I mean, I haven't played Madden in a little while, okay. so I, I wouldn't be able to give you that answer. But from what I remember, I don't think I was ever able to do that. So I didn't know about it. So okay. that's a great feature, though, if it has yeah. been around or if it's new. it's I love it. Yeah, that's pretty nuts. So great great feature for sure and we saw it utilized there that ball oh my god <laughs> that ball somehow caught uh timeout gonna be used Whoa. Not gonna be for much of anything but still crazy catch from here yeah. <laughs> and now we're gonna go quads left we'll see roger's shotgun what can he make happen Reese Hall getting choked up on the linebacker, but he's going to maybe get the pass. No, not quite. Aaron Rodgers' accuracy on that corner route going to the right again, being missed. It's kind of a little bit of a weird one. You don't usually see Rodgers with 
bad accuracy, especially in the mid. But he's going to try it there again. It this time, hits it to Brees Hall. It will be a gain of six. But is it too little, too late? I'd have to say yes with 19 seconds on the board. Even if it is Madden, I cannot see this being able to feel the comeback. Yeah, I mean, you, you add a minute, maybe, but it's uh, 19 seconds left. It's just not going to happen for St. 515. But You'd need, like, a fumble on the... Yeah. Kick on, on the return, and then you have to score. And I mean, with an offside kick as well, uh, onside kick as well. Like I, I just, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's just not really doable. Quante Smith's gonna catch that one. Try to return it to the blow up. Maybe popping that ball loose. Not gonna happen. But good game for Benny. Good answer back. Played well on defense. Took advantage of the of the same 515 mistakes. And able to capitalize on offense too. Got back to that running game. Used Saquon Barkley as much as he could. As uh, that's that's gonna be picked off. I, I gotta say, <laughs> um, I, like again, I, I get the games over, so why not? I guess, really but matter, I mean, yeah. yeah, it doesn't really matter. If, if again, if, like you said, if there was a minute left on the clock, I'd really be questioning the decision making. But that is not the case, so we don't gotta worry about it. Yeah. Uh, I guess if I'm uh, Benny, you know, <laughs> it don't it don't really matter. Let's just see if we can hold back on the defensive side now and just play prevent, get this one done and over with. Rogers trying to air it out, but it's not going to find Corley. Again, misses that out route. Rogers right now not looking very accurate when it comes to throwing the ball to the back shoulder. Yeah, I, I, if I'm saying 515, I would, I would switch up the vibe here. It, he's kind of worn out his Jets luck. Great, great two yard catch from Reese Hall <laughs> to close out the game. But it's going to be a 31-17 victory for Benny. So we are, in fact, going to a game three. And, well, with uh, with how these games have gone, uh, this game three should be an absolute shootout. Right. I mean, let's talk about the switch to Philly, right? I, that, that was so much better for Benny. It's what he needed. And, honestly, to me, the story of the game isn't even the fact that uh, – the wide receivers made all the difference. To me, it was the fact that you have the running back switch up the two-man backfield with Kenneth Gainwell and Saquon. Both have different running styles, and it really had to keep St. 515 guessing, even when he knew the run was coming, right? So, again, not the luxury that you have with Baltimore because you only really got Derrick Henry, and we didn't see Benny utilize that second running back, and I believe it's uh, Mitchell, but I, I don't, oh, yeah. yeah, but again, didn't really see him used at all. So, better backfield usage out of Benny with Kenneth Gainwell and Saquon, and honestly, it just worked like a charm. You're absolutely right, and, and you even touched on it, the, the wide receiver usage as well. We didn't see a lot of, but we did see Devontae Smith, I believe, with two or three catches, so uh, able to use him just a little bit. So we'll get more in-depth with, uh, with Benny's usage of those receivers in just a little bit as we go into a quick little break. It's going to be game three for all the marbles. It's St. Clair and Mount Aloysius tied 1-1 going into a game three.
Welcome back, Saints Nation. We're here with some more Madden. We have what was going to be, you called, a potential shootout coming game three. We don't know, but we got to assume based on what we've seen so far, you know, the players, they've had two games now to kind of figure out what each other wants to do. Uh, I guess more on the side of Benny because Saint 515 has just chosen the Jets for twice in a row. Sauce Gardner's working out for him. But you got to ask yourself, with the recent change that Benny did to the Eagles, do you think there's going to be a switch real quick before we get into game? I 
I think there is. I, I was talking to Benny before. I think there nope. is. Well, <laughs> not, not going to be the case. And I, I honestly think this is a mistake from Saint 515, but he's going to be out to prove myself wrong. I just, I just don't. You know, uh, we talked about it right before game one is the mobility of Aaron Rodgers. Like, it's it's hurting him so far. If there's any pressure towards the middle of the pocket, and he's not able to get the ball out within, like, three seconds, it's it's either a sack, it's either a, a forced interception, or, you know, it could be worse, you know. And uh, it, it's it's hurt him so far, for sure. And we just saw the same thing there that uh, Benny did the first game. He's going to move C.J. Gardner-Johnson to the actual linebacker position, which I actually, you know, uh, again, I think I'm actually a fan of this regarding yeah. the fact that Rodgers' mobility kind of hurts him right now. We saw a great usage out of Devin White last game, but again, it doesn't really matter as long as one of your linebackers are really mobile, even if it means you have to move the strong safety down. We'll see how it works out on the defensive side. But for right now, Benny opening it up with anything anyone could have predicted with a halfback stretch. Saquon going to try to make a move to the inside, but Gardner putting the hit stick on him. Still gained a six, and it leaves you a second and four. Yeah, I mean, who would have thought uh, a halfback stretch to start the game off and follow it up with, you guessed it, a halfback stretch. Just kidding. It was a bit of a misdirect, and back the other way, Saquon goes, and he's going to cross the line for a six-yard gain. That's going to be a first down. Right, I mean, that was the big thing for Benny last game. We were talking about it. It's the switch up between Barkley and Kenneth Gainwell. They both run the ball in different ways. The switch up is kind of weird for St. 5-1-5 to deal with. Hurts rolling out to his left. He didn't like the man who he had on the crossing route, so he's going to elect to actually have to take the sack. You would have thought maybe the throw away would have been the best option as he was out of the pocket, but the ball just simply didn't make it there in time. Oh, nice quick throw, but inaccurate to A.J. Brown, the intended receiver there, is Gardner on the prowl as Jalen Hurts now going to be ISO'd back by himself. Third and 17, a lot to gain here. I'm looking at Devontae Smith yet again over the middle with that post route. C.J. Mosley dropping deep. This one's not going to be enough, and it'll be punted away here by the likes of Benny. And, well, you saw C.J. Mosley working his his butt off to get all the way to that third level and Devonte Smith I mean I like that matchup I think that's the throw that you gotta that you gotta make there no definitely a mismatch I mean a quick receiver like Smith again it's just usually what you would think the call would be but nope I guess just didn't there was something about it that he just didn't like opts to go over the check down and just pay out for him gonna be a punt again better than maybe forcing a throw and giving up a pick sure, so yeah. again it's gonna be Benny don't, to just choose a safe option he's gonna be on defense and surprise surprise he's usering Devin White yeah, Devin White and I like this Ooh, Devin White just missed that tackle that could cost him huge and it does it's gonna be about an 18 yard gain that's Brees Hall up the middle and I, I do like the CJ Gardner Johnson uh, non-user play because uh, you have that quicker linebacker that allows Benny to kind of stay in that zone coverage if uh, Gardner Johnson is going to be the one to, to move up the middle a little bit quicker so I like that play call out of him good stop right there just a just a kind of a misclick um, on Devin White caused that first down but nevertheless one yard play there back to second and long but again it's Brees Hall I mean a hard person to take in the open field, right? I mean, Brees Hall is probably one of the hardest to make an open field tackle on as that play is going to fall incomplete. Quads left right now out of Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. Rodgers shotgun. We'll see how this one goes. Devin White picking up the crossing route, but it's just going to be a little too shallow on the coverage from White. Brees Hall making a blast man miss, but it didn't really matter. He was gone for six. A quick score from Saints and the Jets. Yeah, that one was not looking pretty off the get-go. Devin White just playing a little bit too shallow there. Tried to get out, had the right coverage, had the right idea, just wasn't deep enough. Aaron Rodgers lobs that ball right over his head and into the arms of Brees Hall, who was able to trot it in to the end zone for a nice, I believe that was about a 40-yard play. So good start here from St. 515 on the board first for the first time this series. I think the series, if you go back and watch all the games, it's just been the story of mistakes, both on the defense and on the offense. 
uh, right now, both players sometimes making some questionable plays, which then maybe shock their mental a little bit, and then they just sort of dig themselves in their own graves. Uh, we definitely saw that in game one for Benny. We honestly, I would say, saw it in game two for St. 515. Benny hitting the crosser. It's going to be Goddard working the sideline before he gets tackled out of bounds. 204 on the clock in the first. Great job. But again, forward motion will actually get that clock rolling again. So let's see what Benny and the Eagles have planned. It's going to be Hertz under center. He's coming through. He's actually going to dump it off. A check down to Barkley. I thought the tackle was going to come in a little earlier. But he'll find a little bit of room, second and nine. And it's going to have to be a couple of interesting passing plays from Benny. You can't run in this scenario. You're probably going to set yourself up for a third and long. So now opting to roll to the left. This is something that I wish I saw a little more out of him in the first game he had with the Eagles. You have Hurts, you have that run ability. Rolling out to the left, he's gonna pick up a gain of eight. Yeah, I mean, the first play of the drive, I like the tempo switch up to, you know, have a medium level throw, get the ball out there, and, and Dallas Goddard getting him involved too. Um, great way to start the drive, not the outside stretch run that we're so much used to at this point. We saw it there, but able to get the first down. So now perhaps you see Benny start to utilize um, more create, more creativity as we get deeper into this ball game. As Jalen Hurts rolling out, two linebackers chasing him, trying to get it away. He does, thank goodness. As uh, eight seconds left to go here in quarter number one, it's going to be a second down and ten. Eagles and Benny still in a very good position. As we're going to see some deep, deep routes. Devontae Smith down to slot. He's open right now. Not going to have him anymore, though. Forces that ball into double coverage. Almost had A.J. Brown on the outside. And he just can't get the second foot down. Wasn't able to have any toe taps or drags. But now, I think if I'm looking at it correctly, A.J. Brown on that zig route. It was what was going to be looked at first. Going through his progressions, he's going to try to find Goddard through the seam. But he's going to get hit pretty hard by the safety there. He's not going to be able to hold on for what would have been a massive game. It would have been a huge gain, absolutely. I think, I think Benny trying to do a little bit too much there. It's going to be about a 60-yard field goal. So he's just going to elect to go for this one. Fourth and 10, though, so definitely not an ideal situation. Gonna have to get this ball out relatively quick into triple coverage. Goddard had hands on it, but couldn't reel it in. And it's going to be a turnover on downs here at uh, at their own 43-yard line. And Aaron Rodgers gets back to work. And that's the second time now that Goddard's been looked at for that play, but the hit just jars the ball loose, not able to hold on. It is going to be the run now coming through from St. 5-1-5, not with Brees Hall, but the backup back. And a great play, honestly. I'm surprised it went that far. I'm surprised it went that well. But a huge gap in the A gap opened up, and St. 515 took great advantage of it. Yeah, that's Israel Abanikanda, Pittsburgh University represent Pitt Panthers. But back to Brees Hall we go. Broken tackles on the outside, gets around Slate, two to the five, into the end zone. Somehow breaks through after three or four broken tackles, really. And that's Hall's second touchdown of the game, this time a rushing touchdown. And it's like a 14-point game. Four minutes left to go here in the first half. I mean, an absolute switch up on the side of St. 5-1-5, because we don't usually see him being very dominant in the first half. He's usually someone who then comes back and gains momentum in the second half from the first two games yeah. we've watched. But not the story here and this is looking really bad for Benny because you don't have the luxury of running that split back set with Gainwell and Barkley anymore you can't just give it to one and then the other you gotta save your clock here so especially down by two scores it's gonna have to force Benny to get a little bit uncomfortable we'll see how he handles the pressure x-factor on for Hertz dropping back in the pocket going to air it out for Goddard again but it's the same story Sauce Gardner had that one all the way and he's going to break up the pass yeah, it's, I don't know. I mean, I guess that's what's been working for St. 515 on defense is just relying on Sauce Gardner. And now Hurts is going to roll out and hit up the middle. Somehow breaks what? through, gets a first down, looking to break that second tackle. Not sure how he made, made it through three players there, but he did. I was honestly just mouthing under my mic. Slide, slide, slide. I thought it, like we were yeah. going up against three guys that you got to think the hit stick's going to happen. Check down to Barkley. There it is but it's not going to jar the ball loose. Barkley, safe hands. He keeps the check down for three routes. 
you see another deep play here. And this is where Benny gets a little bit risky when perhaps he doesn't need to be. As you can see, that crossing out from Goddard gonna come in. That's covered though, but you see Saquon out in the flat, able to get the ball. Reels it in, gains about seven yards, and we're gonna be up to a third and one. And perhaps an outside run. No, well, it's gonna be an inside run here in the shotgun format. And again now, Barkley with the ball, tries to go through the A-gap, but it's going to get clogged up. Does he actually have enough for the first? Yes, he does. Forward progress, enough to give it to him. Yeah, the B-gap wide open. Yeah, that's what I was going to comment on, is the fact that I honestly, I thought there was another gap, but Benny just either didn't see it or didn't have enough time oh to boy. react to it. A little bit of an errant pass. He really likes hitting Goddard on this, on this deep crosser, this deep post, but it's just not working. Again, another one to jar the ball. This has happened three times now. And you got to think, what's Benny thinking right now? Had A.J. Brown wide open, instead tries to fit it in the middle for Jahan Dotson, the man from Washington. And he's going to be able to get that one through. Completed pass, new set of downs. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting to see as Hurt's going to hit Bar or Gainwell this time in the flat, up to about five yards. But really interesting, Benny's been trying to find the line of getting the ball out too quick and too late. And on those on those deeper crossing routes, you're talking like 20 to 40 yards down the field. You got to hit that player as soon as he turns the corner. Uh, you got to hit that button because by the time he hit it and he's already across um, the middle of the hash marks, you know it's too late. And now the safety can come back down and cover that player. So he's got to hit those deep crossers a little bit sooner, and uh, he'll eventually find a little bit more success. But he's getting the ball out nice and quick right now, especially into the flat and these, these short little curl routes as well um, for Barkley and company. Watch AJ Brown, if he burns the first corner, he can just rely on the safety. He did end up burning the first corner, but the check down is going to be down to Barkley. Barkley making sufficient progress down the sideline, and he's going to be tackled right at about, I believe, when this penalty goes through. It's going to be the seven yard line. Yeah, again, a nice design play and great patience. That's, that's what I'm talking about, getting the ball a little bit slower when you need to. Barkley in the flat again, he's found success, gets to the corner and into the end zone. And Benny finally on the board here with a minute 42 left in the second quarter. Gonna make it a one possession game and a seven point game at that. And uh, well, he stuck with what worked on that drive and that was getting Barkley out to the flat. Right, I mean, I probably could use more than one hand to count how many times he used that yeah. route. So again, if you're St. 515 on, from the Jets right now, I mean, especially in one drive, you, you gotta get someone on that and just not being able to do it that time was able to free up Benny's success on that drive. Again, I am a little bit worried. I feel like, again, Benny might be kind of crutching it a little bit. If it does get picked up and used, I want to see what he does next. He clearly can't go on that 40-yard deep route to Goddard. It's happened three times. It's been broken up three times. But I do like at least from Benny that he hasn't tested Sauce Gardner's side right now. Saint 515 testing Benny's defense with Brees Hall down the sideline. Able to find the tackle, but not before the damage is done. If I just saw that right, Brees Hall has four rushes for 129 yards. I mean, that is absolute insanity. And if you're on the side of Saint 515, that is the play you needed to happen just to, I guess, drill in the mental decline for Benny, because that is a huge play to give up. I can't imagine he's feeling too good about it. Yeah, that's just over 30 yards of carry right now for Brees Hall. Right. So maybe you want to get him a little bit more involved with your same 515 and on the other side Benny, maybe maybe just have the linebacker literally just follow him around the whole time. Right. Because you almost just want to put him on man. Yeah. Like, you, you should. Exactly. Because yeah, it's, uh, it's hurting him right now, but Benny's been able to do a great job on all other aspects of, of the defensive side. It's just covering Brees Hall has been so difficult. And perhaps St. 515 thought that same thing going into this game, sticking with the Jets. Right, I mean, you said, uh, honestly, it was going to be a mistake. I would have sided with you, honestly. It seemed like that Benny maybe had this Jets offense figured out. But it is the switch up from St. 515 on the run game. He's able to find the room he needs, and then he can use Rodgers to just end it. It is going to be an Aaron throw, though. I have no idea what he was thinking there. Even if Slay's not on him, White already, Devin White already undercut the route. Slay's going to be able to get there, though, and finds the pick. Wow. 
I mean, that's a huge play and a huge moment for Benny. <clears throat> this could potentially be a 14-point swing here, one way or the other. This is absolutely massive. So now Benny looks like he's going to get aggressive here. 27 or 21 seconds left. He's got two timeouts. Going to need a deep ball and deep ball fast. And there it is, A.J. Brown finally involved. There's a quick timeout. And now the opportunity to get those three points on the board and potentially more certainly on the table. You got one timeout, though, so you're going to start to utilize the outside of the field maybe after this play. And that's really the story of why he hasn't been found too much. A.J. Brown is able to beat the first corner, obviously, on the man coverage. But then when it comes to fitting the ball before the safety can get there in time, he's not able to. Got it on a huge. Huge gainer. He finally finds him on that deep route, and he's able to get it down to the 31-yard line. I think the story of why A.J. Brown back, going back on the tangent, though, is that right now Benny's having a hard time finding the gap between that corner and the safety, fitting that ball in towards Brown. So by the time he beats it, he's already his eyes are going to somewhere else. So we'll see what Benny finds now. A.J. Brown, or sorry, <laughs> Hurts dropping back deep into coverage. And honestly, a very scary throw there. Thought Sauce might have almost picked up off. I think he did. He just caught it out of bounds. Out of bounds? Uh, I'm pretty sure he caught that ball, unless I'm mistaken. But either way, three points that Benny was not expecting to have. This could have been a 21 to 7 game. So absolutely huge interception at the two yard line allows Benny to stay within one score and even get some extra points on the board. So his next touchdown is going to give him the lead if he's able to prevent it. Two seconds left to go. We're going to be just about finished here for it. The first half is Davis going to run it out and probably just take a knee here. Not going to be the case, but nevertheless, second half just about underway. And well, what are your thoughts on the first half? What do you, what did you like to see from Benny? And uh, what, what did you like on the side of St. 515? So what I like from Benny is he's using his flat routes from his running backs really well. But what I like to see is that he actually went away from it on his last drive and tried to switch things up, mixing it up to Brown a little bit more, found Jahan Dotson for a couple, and then finds Goddard finally on that big gainer. So, again, oh I liked boy. what I saw there, but are you kidding me? What a return there from St. 515. Absolutely immaculate play, and it's going to be able to bring up now what should be a short field. For Aaron Rodgers and the Jets. Short field indeed. Starting at the opponent's 43. Hand off to Brees Hall on the outside. Undercuts that. Hits the gap well. Ooh. Able to get past that player. I believe that's DeGene who he beat. Nice 15 yard gain for him. And first down yet again. And we got that fullback out there. Lead blocker for Brees Hall coming up. Brees Hall running through the middle again. He's got eight rushes for 151. Slowing down a little bit, yeah, if I can yeah. even use that word. <laughs> so, yeah, so off of eight rushes. <laughs> slowing down for sure. <laughs> rough rough uh, second quarter for him, I guess. <laughs> right. But. I mean, that's the last thing on his mind right now. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, single back for, or sorry, not single back, shotgun formation. But I have no idea what was happening there. I mean, it looked like three of the wide receivers just actually stood still. It was really weird to look at, and Rodgers just had nowhere to go. That mobility hurting him. Going to get taken down for the sack, third and 17. Third and deep. Still within, well within field goal territory. Just cannot take a sack of your Aaron Rodgers. Pressure comes again, gets the ball out. Nice ball to Conklin. Has an opportunity for a first down and more. Finally taken down by Slay. He's got that X Factor activated. Will not matter. First down, Jets. And at the 12 yard line, still room to get a first down here, too. Lots of time for Aaron Rodgers and company. Gonna call an audible. He's gonna call Brees Hall back to his left side. So him and Brees Hall in the backfield now. Conklin up the middle. Oh. Great, great read there. Great he know, read. Yeah, he knows Brees Hall is coming back into the middle. I mean, eight carries for 151. You got to assume it's better off Benny just assuming that the run's going to happen. He chose the right call there. Usering Devin White has a wide open gap into the backfield. Straight shot at him. And a great job tackling in open space when it's Brees Hall you're up against. Yep. Very well put. Devin White having a fantastic last couple games here. See Gardner Johnson, Devin White both going to pressure down low. Trying to get to the quarterback. Rodgers bounce on the outside. Gets it in. Somehow caught by Ruckert. Not quite in the end zone, but Aaron Rodgers somehow gets that ball off. Throws behind him. 
And Dejean still cannot come up with the interception or even a knockdown. I mean, off the jump as well, it honestly looked like he was a little bit behind Ruckert as well. I really don't know how that one worked out, but regardless, that's not the question that everyone else is figuring out right now. They want to get that line stopped. And that's what Benny's going to be able to do exactly. Second and goal, loss of two, I believe, on the play, and a great job of stuffing the O line. Absolutely. Rodgers now. Brees Hall still to his left. See Alan Lazard in the slot. Open in the end zone. Two players deep now, but that's Williams on the outside. Can't get him involved in real life, but you got to get him involved in the game. <laughs> Mike Williams, first touchdown as a Jet in this series and IRL as well. So great job by St. 515. Very patient down the field. Took advantage of the opportunities he was given. And now we're back up to a two score game. Right, I mean, honestly, whatever was called there, I believe it was an audible from Rodgers. It had the defense messing, like, all about. He could have thrown that to Williams. Wilson was open. I believe um, Corley as well. Like, I was literally watching that right side. Both of them had nobody on them. The defense was just in shambles. And right there, it was just a beautiful reaction on the audible from Rodgers and say 515 getting stuff done up by two scores right now with 229 left in the third Benny's got to be putting the press on it's amazing how much more careful both of these guys are playing in game three it, Absolutely. it, it seemed uh, it felt a little bit more reckless in game one and game two but very careful very well managed game on both ends and Benny un unfortunately for uh, the, you know if you're a fan of the St. Clair Saints unfortunately down in this game but still like not making critical 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 mistakes as uh, he's going to get this one out to Stoll, who's going to move it right across the 45. And moving up tempo now as Benny knows he's just got over six minutes left to try to tie this game or even take the lead in a bit of a risky throw. And guess who? It's us, Gardner. Right. I mean, there was just nothing about that. He has that Ziggro covered to a T. I mean, I really don't understand what was seen there. But again, sometimes Sauce Gardner is just the better player. Hurts rolling to his left. Alex to go for the run. Hit stick in coming but he just gets the sideline in time third and one but if you ask me it was worth it to go out there you could have been definitely looking at a fumble if you were trying to go for the first down absolutely good job getting out of bounds you stop the clock too i mean oh no oh no that is the last <laughs> that is the last thing that you wanted to happen if you were benny and there's that hit stick that you're just talking about yep. but this time not on Jalen Hurts is going to be on Saquon and a crucial drop. And Devin White returning the favor, hit stick on Brees Hall now. Both these guys really getting through the middle with their linebackers. I mean, it seems like those gaps are just opening right up for them. So again, I want to see right now if the user on Devin White pulls back into coverage. There it is, trying to cover the crosser, but it's going to be deep now. I believe the beat is on the eagle side there. It should be a pick. I have no idea. He was blanketed in coverage, a 50-50 ball, and Benny comes out on top of it. <laughs> Benny got a, wow. I mean, that, that was just an extremely lucky, extremely fortunate play uh, and a crucial mistake from St. 515. We're just giving them credit for managing the game extremely well and two big mistakes uh, have flipped the script and now Benny gets away with one. He does. And uh, a huge interception. Now he's got possession of the ball and it's basically like those two plays never happened. Back he is on offense. And back to the flat route. It's been working for him. I don't care who's on it. Running yeah. back, tight end, it don't matter. Right now, gain of eight. He's making it work. And I can only assume with what I'm seeing right now, if this corner bites on the end, no, not quite. It will be the cross down to Connor. But what is that read? I didn't like that. I actually liked the crosser out there. Yeah. I saw it open in the middle. There was absolutely nobody on it. The corner didn't move into the middle like I thought was going to happen with Saquon not going to the left. And it just opened up, but then he just didn't see it. Doesn't matter though, he gets the first down with Saquon. Well, time ticking away, you really would have wanted that down on that cross. You're probably looking at a good like 20 yard gain there. It didn't come through. Oh, Hertz rolls out left, looking for that player in the flat. It's gonna be stole again. Avoids a tackle somehow. Does gain nine. Eight seconds left here, now in the third. Benny's gonna have to start acting a little bit quicker as he is. Jalen Hurts alone in the backfield. Two receivers out to his right, two to his left. Make that three. Got that deep ball. Had to get it out quick though. Devontae Smith had him. And that's what I was talking about. As soon as he makes that cut, he needs to throw that ball immediately. Yep. 
He beats the first corner, but what Benny's not doing, he's not getting that ball out quick enough before the safety can pick it up. Right. So again, I've seen that with AJ. I think that's the reason why he hasn't been involved too much is that Benny's not being able to see after he beats that first corner. He can't see the opening or fit the gap before the safety comes down into coverage and picks up the man. It was this case there for Devonta Smith. Hurts rolling out to his left. Doesn't have the flat route, I believe. No, I thought it was picked up and covered, but it frees up after the corner. Instead of covering the flat, tries to go for the tackle on Hurts. Instead, frees up the flat. He's going to find Stoll for a nice little pickup and a new set of downs. Yeah, it looked like he wanted Goddard there. Did did have Goddard in double coverage, so good good uh, recognition to just get that player down low in the flat at Stoll again. He's had probably seven or eight catches this game. Got Goddard deep. Got him into the end zone, too. Oh, my goodness. What, what an immaculate throw from Jalen Hurts to get that ball in. Goddard hangs on just inches, inches from being out of bounds, being dropped, being not a touchdown. Two-point conversion on the way and in. And now we got ourselves a three-point game. This was a ball game, Zarin. I mean, that that is probably the best throw of the night so yeah. far for, for both sides of the series. I mean, an absolutely amazing touch pass. A.J. Brown finally getting involved, too, with a two-point conversion. So, I mean, there you go. You just, again, it seems like the story of this series has just been mistakes costing people on the other side of the ball. I mean, it just it's, it keeps happening. And you got to hope if you're Benny right here that St. 515 will hopefully give you a quick turnover. I mean, you could be right there. 445, you have lots of time to work with, too. Just kind of play this one safe. Let's see what the offense gives you. Aaron Rodgers, single back formation, plays play action. Somehow doesn't actually have any pressure on him for the first time, I want to say, in this series. But a really poor throw, a really poor read. I have no idea what he was looking for down there in Lazard. Double coverage is going to get broken up. Yeah, I feel like we're a little bit too hard on Benny, too, because say 515 is doing the exact same thing on, the, on those deep crossing routes or those deep posts. He's, he's just not getting the ball out quick yeah. enough. And, and that was a prime example right there. The receiver was literally standing still waiting for the ball. He had him wide open. As soon as he made that cut, you get it across the middle of the field. As soon as you see those safeties separate on opposite sides of the field, you know you have the middle open. You got to get that ball out quicker. And again, uh, to cut some more credit to these guys, you know, it might not be the thing that they look at. First, obviously, Alan sure. are not the number one receiver. So as you're going through your route progressions, you might not is. see it. But now he sees it perfectly fine. It's going to be Mike Williams, a huge play, the 10, the 5, and he's going to be in for another score, putting St. 515 for the meantime up by 9. That was a prime example of exactly what you need to do on those deep posts and as soon as Mike Williams made that cut bang the ball goes out right into the hands Mike Williams wide open a free six points safety didn't pick it up in time it's the same thing right I mean yep. fitting the ball right into that gap is what Ooh. you need to do what was that shanking the PAT that Not very common to see there and yeah that could potentially be a big part of the series because it really could now if Benny can just get a field goal and a touchdown that, I mean, that's, that, that's 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 the lead that's yeah. it right that's so it's gonna be interesting we'll have to definitely take a look at that one but now there's definitely almost no chance of a tie ball game yeah. and a potential overtime based off of that. The scoring just doesn't work that way. Unless unless there is a, a shanked PAT on the side of Benny. But the way he's been kicking the ball, he's kicked a 60-yarder. <laughs> uh, Mind you, it bounced off the crossbar. Yeah, it did, it hey, did. 60 yarders is 60 yarder. Hey, we was, take those. It was straight as an arrow, too. It's not like it was almost right or That's almost true. left. That's true. It was true. pretty straight. So definitely kicking capabilities. Not really out of the question here. But Jalen Hurts back in the backfield looking to work quick. Needs to get rid of that ball. He does. And uh, we're going to go down to second down. Four minutes left to go. Benny down, nine points. Ryman Clemens doing a good job of just getting through the gap that he was given, shedding the tackle, and he finds just the breakup on what would have been a deep bomb. So, again, is now Hurts dropping back. Finds a man over the middle. It is A.J. Brown for the first time, and I want to say ages that we've seen him since he was hit on that fly route earlier. And now it seems like what is this maybe a jet sweep down from Devonta Smith. We'll have to see. There it is. Let's see if it works out for him. Jet sweep cuts into the middle, gets the first down, and maybe more going through tackles. He's going to be down on the 48. That's a good, that's a good play call from Benny there. He, you notice the, the linebacker is playing man-to-man, -man, elected to bring Devonta Smith over, and, and he was fast enough to at least gain the first down. 
Gonna have Goddard open down the right side and able to get the ball in as well. And well, we you talked about Lamar and getting those those uh, back shoulder throws and those uh, you know those corner routes in. Jalen Hurts has it locked down and whoa, gonna try it again. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> I think Sauce might have seen that one coming, but yeah. Anyways, Jalen Hurts able to get those corner routes down pretty pat, so um, he's made it work in this series for sure. Right. I mean, I almost want to say I wasn't a fan of seeing it again and again and again, but for the last two times, it's ended up working. So for whatever reason, St. 515 hasn't been able to get the control that he usually has on it, did have at that time. So probably the mistake not going to be made again. Motion right now. Wilson going to add another man in the backfield to block. A.J. Brown hitting a little out route. I think that's that Zig that he loves running with him. Yeah. But I wasn't looking there, so I do I cannot confirm. However, completion goes, and now it's third and two. Not a very safe look there. Everybody was kind of covered right there, at least from what I could see. I could tell he was looking for A.J. Brown on that little out route, but it just wasn't there, and he couldn't make another read in time before Clemens got to him. Yeah. Lucky he didn't fumble. There have been a couple of those things where in past Maddens, I know that ball's usually coming out, and it's going to be a fumble because the way they've changed Madden, I guess, the arm can just go quicker to get the ball going forward. But I've had that happen so many times, whether it's me having it happen against me or doing it to the other person, where you tackle the quarterback when they're in the middle of making a throw, it's almost always a fumble because the animation just doesn't go quick enough. Yeah. I mean, as you saw just there, barely getting the first down was Benny. Uh, just before the two-minute warning as well, so the clock's going to stop, but that was so, so close to being the end of the ball game right there. Barkley in the flat. I That's going to be a touchdown. Saquon Barkley. And all you need is a PAT to get within two points. One more stop for the side of Benny and the St. Clair Saints. And uh, he's going to have an opportunity to win this game in the final seconds. Right, I mean, the flat routes were working for him all game, so why not just call a screen and bring two extra blockers in there? Hey, why not, right? I mean, we think that the Jets are maybe expecting it on the side of St. 515. You know, the flat route's been being used all day. He gets off of it, gives a little bit of a break, and then... Oh, man, I thought for a second yeah. there that the onside <laughs> kick might have been recovered there. That's been twice that we've seen an onside kick bobbled this series. Yep. So, I mean, man, not, not very common, you would think, but, I mean, maybe in Madden, the chances of that happening are a lot higher. Oh, almost a great read from Benny <laughs> up the middle. Him. Yeah, nice, nice little spear there, but yeah. almost a great read. That was almost a lost play uh, for seeing 5-1-5, but... It's, uh, it's going to be second down and eight in that I form again. Hand off to Brees Hall outside. Such a huge tackle right there. So, so huge. And now, if you're the Jets, what do you like to do here? Do you, do you try to burn one more timeout? Do you try to get the first down? But third and 12 in such an awkward spot. Let's see what they do. Play action. Yeah, Going to get, get blown all. up and taken down. Aaron Rodgers drops that ball, and it's fourth and 12. And they're gonna try to kick this field goal, it looks like. This is gonna be a 66 yarder. Tying for an NFL record. Let's see if Greg Light can get it. It's up and it is no, no good. good. Just going short. I thought it just barely snuck in. Wow. But not quite. Yeah. And I gotta say, a pretty poor play call there from St. 515. I am gonna grill him a little bit there yeah. because it's third and 12. You line up in I form. What's the point? Everybody yeah. knows it's probably going to be play action. There's no point of you running the ball. I get it. You want to burn a timeout. But with a minute 12, there's still a lot of time to work with if you're Benny. And now using the clock to his advantage, he can hold possession here with a minute left and two timeouts. He's probably going to play just to get into field goal range and maybe win it on a last second kick. Yeah. It hurts. Rolls out. Has to get rid of it. Oh, that was so huge to avoid the sack, avoid the clock runoff. And that was a 57-yard field goal, by the way. I was absolutely blasted on that one. <laughs> uh, my math, absolutely terrible. But nevertheless, a miss. Now an opportunity, of course, for down territory. You just need a quick little gain here. Nothing too crazy. Don't need to force the ball down the field. You got that coverage down the left side. Barkley lined up as that X receiver. I like Brown on this zig route, and that's exactly where he's going to go. He wasn't lined up with Sauce Gardner, and I could tell he was going to do exactly just that. You know Benny loves that zig route with A.J. Brown. One of the few receivers in the game that you can hot route onto a zig and he loves using it pays off for him there quick gain first down new plays and with 20 seconds left he's probably just going to run this ball see what yards you can gain from it probably call his timeouts and i'm assuming call a field goal
goal, but I know. I think he's just going to try to I think he's just going to try to. He's going to wear this clock down and kick the field goal at the 33. I mean, you had an opportunity to, to call a timeout, run another play, at least another run, gain some more yardage. Now, we're going to get into about a, let, let me do the math uh, here, 43, 50-yard field goal here. Okay, so here's the thing, right? With 20 seconds left, you had two timeouts. I'd say if I were him, you maybe use another run, call a timeout, use another run, and then you can just get a little more. There you go, trying to ice the kicker, ice the kicker, which does make it a significantly harder kick to make in yeah. Madden. And All that's right. why I just don't necessarily agree with the play call there. I think Benny could have definitely used a little more of the time better. He had 20 seconds, two timeouts. Here we go. So this is going to be down to the wire. Jake Elliott for the win. Seven seconds on the clock. Benny trying to win it in game three, lining up this kick. Here we go. Ball snapped. Pick it the hole that it's no. going to be wide right. There's a flag. There's a flag. Hold on. Roughing the kicker. It's roughing, it's the, roughing kicker. the kicker. Oh He's going to have a chance at it from 35 yards. 35 yard field goal. So, are you kidding me? Here we go again. 35 yard kick off the penalty for the game, for the win. He's for the got series it. win. Oh my, the God. God. oh my goodness. Benny's going to win the game. He's going to take the series. And the St. Clair Saints are 1 and 0. Oh. You've got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. I thought it was over. I thought maybe with 19 seconds left, he could have gotten a little more yardage to make an easier field goal. But roughing the kicker comes through. Who would have thought? 35 wow. yards. He had the power. Perfect. The accuracy on the dot with it fading away on the ice. An amazing job there by Benny. He takes the series for St. Clair. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Nine point lead, just uh, just under two, or just over two minutes left. Benny able to score those points consecutively. Uh, just absolutely phenomenal. And what a way to finish this series, by the way, after those first two games. That was uh, completely flipped on its head, but man, what a way to close it out. The roughing the kicker, man. Who would have thought? Wow. Who would have thought? Such a, and we talked about critical mistakes, and that was the most critical mistake you could possibly make in that situation. I don't think I've ever seen a roughing the kicker in Madden before. I'm looking back at I don't think I've seen a roughing the kicker before. It the fact that it often. comes in right there, absolutely incredible. Yeah. Well, it, it's tough, too, because you, uh, you know, you really want – like you need to block the kick you feel like you have to attack the kicker and block the kick and i really just think he overshot it and yep. ultimately ran into the kicker per perhaps hit the dive button and i mean wow just absolutely wow what a way to finish this series off that's incredible right i mean so much to talk about uh but i will say one man who can summarize it somewhat is going to be benny we have him here after post game interview and I mean, Benny, you, you just, just take me through it, man. What What's going through your head right now? Oh man, I'm so grateful for the the flag on the, the kick there. <laughs> uh, I was telling Jordan, I was like, man, like the game plan, cause I know you need to save a timeout to ice. Like he was icing the kicker. I was like, man, I need to run another play, call a timeout. But then I looked at the clock. I was like, there's not enough time, man. I just gotta risk it. Kicked it, missed. The opponent played a great game though. He was, he was really good. That's that's very humble, very modest. Um, what was what was going through your head? Like you you go down one zero quick. Um, you know you had a a bit of a awkward second half of the first game. Mm -hmm. What was your mindset going into game number two and onward with the series? Well, eventually I realized that uh, he was having trouble guarding the the gun formation. I would uh, send send someone down the field and like make him choose between a between a player I realized that like halfway through the game and uh, I was just thinking score quick score quick score as fast as you can like if, as soon as he scored the first touchdown I was like man I need to just keep putting board, points on the board like there's no way I can come back if I just don't score right I mean I gotta say it was very impressive seeing how you're usually such a run heavy player being done at half we were talking about it you're gonna have to get a little bit outside of your own bag here mm -hmm. to make this one work get a little bit awkward mm -hmm. but we see under pressure 
I mean, you've made it work. Yes, look, yes. You could say a little bit of, you know, RNG here and there, but <laughs> at the end of the day, yeah. all that matters is that end score. You've done a great job there. Yeah. And I got to say, switching to the Eagles from the Ravens, it really helped you out. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I like dipping it off to Saquon in the backfield. I think he's like a more rely like relying uh, receiving back. Like instead of Derrick Henry, he's more of a powerhouse. So like I think that helped a lot. Yeah, for sure. I mean, an absolute beauty casting your games here today. It's going to be all the time we have for today, though. It's been a great show. I want to thank you to all the viewers. Thank you to the people in the back for making the stream work. Thank you to our sponsors, Tim Hortons, Subway, the SRC, the SCC alumni, and Alienware for making this work. I mean, those are my final words there. You got anything for this? I mean, there's nothing else I can really add. That was a crazy game. That was, yep. that was an insane way to finish it. And I'll just say, last time, you see what happens when you switch off the Ravens. Oh, man. Oh, man. oh yeah. yeah. See, no, no, no. come on. Like, yeah. uh, all right, that's, that's enough of that. But um, as Patrick said, like, thank you to all our sponsors. Thank you for everybody uh, supporting this broadcast and everybody in the back room as well who don't get the credit they did, that they deserve. So shout out to them. Great games today. Thank you. Very thank well you. done. Thank you, guys. And uh, that's all for now.